Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hey, Bertha Wallace. Welcome to the stream. I, I've started recording so that way I can start talking about stuff that has happened and I can upload it to YouTube. Uh, so last time what happened, we gathered the party together. We all got uh, sucked into the mists of Barovia via our own means. Uh, each one of us having our different backstory. We roughly got to, like, I know your name now levels of camaraderie. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, we were, we fought off some waves of zombies and were able to find shelter in a, like, a burnt down, uh, just old cabin in the woods in order to help evade a much larger mob of zombies that had, uh, that was coming our way. Uh, so succeeding in that, we were able to then move on and find an otherwise seemingly abandoned town. Uh, following the chimney smoke, we were able to find one house that had a crying uh, set of kids out front of it, telling us that there was a monster in the basement and that their youngest sibling was still stuck upstairs. Being heroes, of course, we decided to, uh, <laughs> to help. And as we walked into the building, the door slammed behind us. That's a recap of what happened last time. Uh, unfortunately, there's not going to be any footage or anything of that. I didn't think about recording the sessions until about five minutes ago. So I'll record these sessions from my perspective and put them uh, put them up on YouTube on my channel, uh, youtube.com slash witheredfizzbang, at which point then we'll, uh, we'll have them for posterity. Uh, and until then, let's, uh, let's see here. Let's bring stuff over all. I'm, oh, I know that there was some music going. Let me launch the game. Let's see if he still has that music going. Yeah, he has some music going, and I'll jump into the session. Let's see. Make sure to do after-session recaps, like a character journal or campfire chat. Ooh, campfire chat would be pretty cool. Druid said he would launch in 30-ish. All right, well, I mean, we, according to our chat, we have, uh, it's uh, 7 o'clock meetup, so I'm late to that, and then 7.30 start time. So I'm going to jump into their Discord, and then we'll see how awkward it is. Let me just, uh... Ba -ba -ba. Hello. 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 I am live already, though I recognize that you may not be. I am not yet. It's though fine. I will be in five minutes. It's fine. Yeah, I, I've got the ten minute countdown thing that I like to do, so. I also like to do that. But I have not been doing the 10 minute countdown. My timer is actually broken. But, uh, and I haven't gotten around to fixing it. But I do just a starting soon screen, which is nebulous enough that any one or two people that happen across me in the five minutes, 10 minutes that it'll be, would be like, oh, all right, whatever. But I am here, and I hear the ticking. Woo! I may change that audio, because apparently there were some phone noises. Hold on. Let me know if you hear phone noises. In I second. will tell you if I hear phone noises. I I hear an alarm go off, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that then. It might be really quiet for... Ch uh, actually, nope, I have my... We're all good. Yeah, no, I just, I can't, like, I, I don't know if it was maybe the frequency or whatever the hell. I just literally couldn't hear it. Yeah, it it's, uh, it's quiet. I have my, the volume for mine turned all the way up and then, you know, headphones directly in my ears and then some things boosted, other things minimized. But yeah, I, I was able to hear a quiet alarm in the background. Uh, which honestly, like... Not, it's fine. I'll, I'll, it'll be all right. 
I've got, uh, I'm recording the session tonight. I didn't think about it last time, but uh, I'm recording things from my perspective. Yeah, I, I And I'll, I I'll be uploading them to my, uh, to my YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Yeah, I gotta get on that. My editing is uh, far to none. <laughs> so, because uh, I don't have an editing software that, for the length of the sessions, right? You have to be able to upload so much video and just, I haven't found anything that's free and works well for me. Yeah, three hour videos is a lot. Yeah. Some of them have uh, limits to the video length before they're like, all right, well, nope, can't do that. Bad. Now I have dramatic haunted spoopy music. Oh here. Let me mute mine. There we go. Yeah, I I uh I've got uh RPG music maker royalty free spoopy music going on. Nice. Yeah. I'm so excited for tonight's session. I am too. I'm really hyped. We uh we leveled up off stream, but basically immediately after last session, most of us. I don't know if anybody uh, if everybody did, but I sure did. Did we tell <laughs> Did we tell the guy who wasn't here? Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Got something. Hang on. Whoop, wrong button. There we go. Aha! My hot keys are working. Quest of Link is lovely. I have turned down some of the music volume a little bit. Let me know if that's still too much. I went from 100% to 70%. Oh yeah, I have it at like 50. Oh yeah. I mean, cold it is better. Yeah, see, it's all, like, perception side of things, right? Like, I made some changes yeah. to my character sheet uh, screens. Cause I, I, so people can see what my character sheet looks like. Whenever I'm looking at it, I bring it up. Uh, uh, but before, I had it, like, just as a page in the middle of my screen. Now I just have the whole page on the screen, so it just flips over. It looks a little less doofy. Twenty-four hit points. Oh, twenty-four hit points, man! Level two, D and D numbers are so bad. <laughs> twenty-four is like starting Pathfinder numbers. Yeah, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, D and D is so bad. Uh, Numbers-wise, their numbers don't translate directly, which is like a saving grace, because like. Oh, you only have 24 hit yeah. points, but like 24 hit points is better than 24 hit points Pathfinder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number inflation I, and whatnot. I, I, one of the attacks I hit with the Stag Lord against Tyler's character did 44 damage because it was a critical. Oh. That is disgusting. Bounded accuracy. And HP over AC. Yeah. That's what Berserwall said about um, the differences. 
Yeah. HP over AC representing that, like, while your character might not... Know, like, you, it all comes down to how you flavor it, right? Because if you're, if you're saying, oh, well, your character is avoiding the hits, but they're, they're still, like, being worn down because they have to dodge and it's like including almost a stamina gauge in your HP just uh, for flavor context. Yeah. I mean, Pathfinder actually just does that with there is stamina a, bar. There well there is stamina rules. Most people ignore that. <laughs> I've never played with stamina. <laughs> no. Well, I'm saying um for like Ranger Ranger has a stamina bar that acts like an, like a health bar, an additional health bar. Um, That's cool. I've never yeah. played a ranger. I I so Bonnie was GMing a run of the Extinction Curse campaign. Okay. We're on a little bit of a break while she's getting her stuff together, but um, I play a flurry style ranger mm -hmm. with the juggler like archetype. Mm -hmm. So I juggle throwing knives and chakrams, and then I can like do four, four to four plus attacks per round. That's pretty. Cool. And my my multiple attack penalty is never higher than a four. A, a minus four. Yep, never higher than a minus four. Wow, that's pretty cool. I know. Uh. Oh, hello. 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 Is that is right, minus four when it caps out at, at three, or what's that from? That's that's the th so. In general, in Pathfinder Second Edition, um, the multiple attack penalty does not stack beyond the third attack. Correct. So it goes to minus ten, and that's it. Right. So for like the agile weapon, it's because it's redu the a multiple attack penalty is like reduced. It's a minus. I can never go beyond a minus four um, because my first two attacks count as one attack for okay. the multiple attack penalty, and then, like, the next one is a four. Um, and then... Uh, eventually, I think it was, like, at level seven. I'm not there yet. But it reduces it to the multiple attack penalty will never be higher than a two, uh, which that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's super good. I mean, if your if your build is I I attack a lot, then like that's really good for that sort of a build. Hit him a yeah. lot. Yeah, hit him a lot. I your DPS might not be individually very high, but like you're right. gonna hit a lot, and that always feels. Good. That was exactly my thing. Like, I did D4s and D6s, but, like, I was attacking four, four plus times around. Alright, so we're just missing Dave. Alright, I'm gonna at least start the starting soon. Uh, maybe I'll go to chat. Well, Drozen, as well as Cat, as well as the guy who wasn't here before. Yeah. Well, he they um they're not gonna be here until after seven thirty, so I'm fine with them kind of coming in behind. Okay. Um. I mean, Mario. Oh, hey. They, we summoned you. Yeah. The yeah. Cat, Cat, Lewis are here, so we're just waiting on Drozen. I didn't hear you come in. My Discord is not making like. Boop noises to tell me that you are no mine mine hasn't been doing that either i don't know why huh cody thanks for hanging out on my stream on monday yeah you have fun with my shenanigans i did i unfortunately i got pulled away so monday was a little crazy uh, I got pulled away to go uh, cook dinner, and that was fine. Uh, and then while I was cooking dinner, I became violently ill uh, and oh, basically no. died downstairs until you were uh, offline. So I, that's oh, no. why I just suddenly disappeared. Oh, I hope you felt better. I, I did. Uh, like, by the next day, it was just like, 
uh, it was like a migraine sort of deal where. Oh, uh, I got. It. Go ahead. Oh no, I was saying I got you because I get I get uh, chronic migraines. So it, it just I don't though, and that's the weird thing. Like just all of a sudden I got a really bad headache, like behind the temples, and it was so bad that it was affecting my vision. And I just couldn't see, like, I had spots showing up in my eyes, and I would get, like, really dizzy real easy. And uh, so I, I just kind of, like, collapsed. We have the giant beanbag. Uh, we have a big beanbag chair that I collapsed in, and that's where I lived for the rest of Monday night. That, that's called the pain balloon. Yo, T-Rex. The pain balloon. The pain blob. Oh, blob. I thought you said balloon. I haven't gotten the spotty vision type migraines in a long time but i i get the temple pain that's my pretty common one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because i get it so often it's just kind of a noise background for me at this point that's unfortunate i'm sorry it, it it's not like debilitating or anything although i get to take a a new type of migraine drug that's a once a month injection let me poke droz in to see where he's at because i I am pretty sure he's off work because he had a much worse medical week than I had. I heard about that. Hopefully he's also doing better. Uh, Bonnie. Oh yeah, how's Bonnie doing? Uh, Bonnie had made some homemade clove oil and has been coping. Mm. Yeah. Has there been uh, this uh, thought about possibly emergency room just to see if they'll uh, take care of it? I mean, it's been like progressively getting a little bit better. So like, I don't oh, know. She, I... If you guys happen to like stumble upon this in like a CVS or something, because I use this sometimes when I have uh, just general tooth or uh, gum discomfort. It's called a uh, Dentek, D E N T E K. Uh, basically, okay. it's, like it's this little thingy that holds basically like a cotton swab for your mouth, and then there's like a numbing agent that uh, comes with it, and it literally just numbs the shit out of your mouth or wherever you put it in your mouth, and it really helps when I have pain. And I think it's like ten bucks. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, it's, it's been very helpful when I've been when I've had like just um, flare-ups of random uh, dental pain, and I haven't been able to get to a dentist. I said uh, I, I let. Uh... I let Jordan know, but I am recording the sessions as well to upload them to YouTube. Hang on. Oh, yeah. I gotta finish uploading. Oh, is that oh, Rosen? Oh, Do I Tron. hear Rosen? Oh, oh. How you Finally. feeling? Resurrected from the dead. Whoa. Hopefully a little less like someone punched him in the kidney. Uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Did good. they give you the good stuff? Uh, they tried to, and I told them the good stuff makes me want to kill myself, uh, because oh, the room no. spins, and it's like a really bad acid trip. Depending like, on what okay, you're well, talking about as the good stuff, they gave you the good stuff, and it made you puke. I mean, that's morphing. I wouldn't call that the good stuff that I can go home with. They can't uh, give me more. Most, home most with. addicts will consider the, the good stuff morphine. Give me the drugs! <laughs> um, Only like two times I've been on morphine. Remember, or to be faster depository. <laughs> yeah. It's the only, only two times I had morphine, I woke up faster than they thought I would, and it freaked them out. Uh, like, after my gastric sleeve. I literally woke up two hours after the surgery, when you're supposed to wake up five hours after the surgery, and all mm. because I was in an uncomfortable position, and I just wanted to move. <laughs> <laughs> For some and the reason. Nurse, yeah. The nurses oh. were like, ah! I'm like, I just want to move my head. My neck hurts. <laughs> so, uh, I said, you know what really usually does the trick when it comes to pain meds for me? It's tramadol. I'm like, oh, okay. In that case, we can give you more than two. Yay. I'm like, yeah, you can. They gave me like 15. Um, 
Thanks. I've not needed to use a single right. pain pill, a single one of them, at all. I did uh, just transition to the starting soon screen, so in about 10 minutes, we'll start working on getting into this. Sounds good. That just reminded me I need to edit my 20 minutes of coming soon screen so I can upload my video to YouTube. I am already here! Um, I'll be right back, though, because I do have to go pee. You just got here. <laughs> you, just got got to you have to hold it. <laughs> He's already yeah. gone. No, oh, no. Yeah, no, I'm not, but I, I, I will no, be back. Just... Sure. Yeah, go, go to the bathroom. <laughs> right, get rid of the Facebook so it doesn't badoop while I'm live. Put yeah, my I phone know. on Just no already. vibrate mode. <gasps> Pretty cool. I, I'm playing around with my dashboard. Oh, cool. I finally have, uh, ac uh ac well, I, not finally, but I have access to, uh, predictions and polls and stuff like that, and so I'm just seeing how that works. Oh, it's Gandalf's birthday. <gighs> Happy birthday, Gandalf. Happy we birthday. We You're think he's a <laughs> He's either 10 or 11. I'm pretty sure he's 11. You're a wizard. He is a wizard. Oh, wrong one. Hang on. A wizard who does. You're a wizard. There we go. This is a test. I can test widgets and make it say, uh, you're a wizard in uh, Hagrid's voice. Yay! On command! Love that. Love that for me. I'm gonna hit the Gandalf button. Do it. I'm setting up my little command center over here. It feels so much better with an actual book in front of me. <laughs> oh, like, there I love is... my Chromebook, but paper is paper. There's a lot to be said for paper. Yeah, paper is paper. I, I can't. A lot easy, it's a lot easier for me to navigate and, like, it just makes me feel better. It's a comfort item. Mm -hmm. I am very excited. Sonny <laughs> yeah, brought it to my attention that, like, it captures my whole GM screen, which I honestly think is kind of cool. So you can see, like, the whole other side of the uh, curtain when you watch my stream. Mercer yep. Wall is claiming PC Master Race. Like, I, I get that, but, like, having the documents digitally, very good. Uh, having the paper, hmm. 10 out of 10. Like, not only is it, like, the physical product that now you get to have, uh, you could, like, look it up at your leisure. Like, you can also put that shit on bookshelves and be proud of it. It's like, it's like, uh, trophies. It's like a trophy that you can buy. It's great. Yeah. Digital files only get you so far. Yeah, because sometimes stuff crashes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought that's what you were, uh, I thought you were saying that a digital content was better. Alright, I am back. How's Buddy? Yeah. Buddy's good. Um, Jordan, is it supposed to be just a black screen? No. Zoom out. Well, you can't see. Oh, there we are. Uh, uh Bang, can I make a, a, a request for my sanity? Yeah. Can you edit the name on your token to have a capital C? Uh, I don't think I did that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, mine was a lowercase x instead of an r, 
so I <laughs> fixed it. <laughs> Technically, my name is number six, but okay. Hello there, birthday boy. Do you want to say hello to the streams? Well, if you want to live to be number seven, you'll cheat. Nah, number seven was a bitch. <laughs> Aww. It's really yeah. number. It's really number three and uh, eight that you have to watch out for. I don't know if I can find Is stuff to kill some bats or something. Nah, number one. Uh, number one. Uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf, say hello to the streams. Say hello, hello to me, Gandalf. He's <laughs> <laughs> doing rubbies. <laughs> it's Gandalf's birthday. Big eleven. What is what is uh, <laughs> what's cat years to to human years? Uh because dogs are seven, years. right? Incorrect. Dogs are seven. Uh, with cats, it kind of varies just yep. depending yep. on where they are in their lifespan. I mean, the same is true for dogs, but. But uh, Gandalf is a distinguished gentleman and also a big dum dum. Mm. The dichotomy of cats. Plus, also, he's got those froggy eyes where they kind of look out a little sideways. That's my chair. Uh-oh. Luna stole Daddy's chair. No, Gandalf did. Oh, he ran out there that fast? Oh, yeah. He's a speedy boy. Especially when there's chicken. Yeah, when you're cooking really fast. Jordan, just as an FYI, I pulled my token out because the token that was already on the map is not, um... was not... <laughs> 98. Fox was 98. Oh, but you, you, you did that already? Okay. Yep. You might need to do that for everybody else. Just uh, I should have gone through and gotten everybody to make it so that their characters were controllable, but I may have missed you. <laughs> the, uh, test mode. I've got yep, a I can move. token. I was away from... Uh, I hear. I heard the whole conversation. But uh, I was away from the computer, so I got home a little bit later, and now I'm clicking good. There we go. New yep, now you token. can control your character. Yep, yep. But can you really? <laughs> Do you New really token have the ability to Rex, thank you again. I let everybody else know, but uh, I think they're pretty happy with their art. But uh, if I they, if they want new stuff, they they know to come to you. Once again, appreciate it. Yeah. Super cool. I'll eventually get to draw my own when I uh, sit down for a minute and do it. Well, you can always bring your sketchbook uh, this weekend or at uh, Mr. Grubbs. That's true. <laughs> what you draw in there? Unrelated people. <laughs> yeah. People no one you would on know. <laughs> we met them on the adventure. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Then, uh, Jordan, I'm bringing my uh, my LARP Dane axe for the weekend. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna go and wacky stick people. How is everybody? How is everybody looking almost gameplay wise? Because we're getting down to the final minute of the uh, countdown. I'm I'm good. I mean, I have my I have my sheets ready. I'm on roll twenty. You guys can hear me. I'm you know I'm cooking dinner, but I can hear everyone from the kitchen. So you know I should I'm not gonna be away from roll fire. I've been ready for days. Yep, <laughs> been ready for days. Your body is ready. My, my body is ready. <laughs> we we would like to play. <laughs> we would like to play. <laughs> Had it proven right. this summer, by the way, that because uh, the Wii was created that anyone could pick it up and play. Mm -hmm. 
no, there's a certain age where you get that that it, it, it has reached out where children have no idea how to play with the Wii. Or it's no longer intuitive, yeah. But it's not a tablet because they didn't know that was going to be how gaming would completely change for children is that it has to be on a tablet. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, st interestingly enough, I was reading something about this guy uh, who's in game development. And because uh, uh, I'm also sort of in game development. But uh, he was telling me that he was at a convention running his game's booth. And the first day of the convention, the Friday, uh, they had people show up. Uh, and they had two stations set up to demo their game. And one was a... Because their, their game had uh, keyboard and mouse or controller support. Uh, they had one station doing keyboard and mouse and one doing controller. And statistically what he saw is most people went to controller. Because... They did like they weren't super familiar. Like uh, I guess it was a lot of younger kids that went to the controller, and they're like, "Oh, okay. Well, they play Fortnite on on their Xbox or whatever, so they know what a controller is." Uh, and but like not so much keyboard. So the next day they went and they they made sure that they had two controllers, and and I forget like what he said the leap was, but eventually they found out that people still weren't playing it with the controllers. They're like, "What's going on?" Because most kids these days only really know iPad gaming, and, yes. and they just yep. touch screen. They like the kid. They had a overwhelming. That's what it was. An overwhelming majority of kids come up to their table and try to just touch the the, the monitor directly to play the game. Yeah, it's it's scary. The only kids I, and I had uh, fourth graders. This summer and uh, fourth grade is about ten years old, nine, mm -hmm. ten years old, uh, and uh, they, the only ones that maybe knew how to control the work is because dad had an Xbox or PlayStation or like an older cousin, sibling, uncle had it, but they didn't actually they still didn't know how to play the game. They just knew what a controller. But that's literally one or two out of the majority had that were just playing, you know. Uh, a lot of them did play on the Switch, though. But they were looking to play on tablets. Alrighty. But go on. Sorry for the aside. Yes. Enough about tablets and that. We've no, got ghosts and zombies shit. and a fucking house. The only tablets so I... we'll be talking about are ancient tablets with prophecies for telling the future upon them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's basically get into it then. Last session, everybody uh, woke up miraculously in the mist, met each other for the first time, hunkered down in an abandoned building, um, watched as a parade of spirits went by for one of the players, anyway, um, and now after, at the behest of two um, unusual children, you have stepped foot into this house. You are still currently in like the um, foyer area. You haven't passed through the door. The door ahead of you is open, however. It's cracked just a little bit. We're in the foyer. Yep, you're in, like, okay. the entry hallway. There's some paintings up on the wall. Um, does it look, like, well-kept? Or does it look, like, are there cobwebs, dust? Is it messy? Does it look like it's been uh, neglected? So, it's definitely a little dusty. You can tell that nobody's lived here in quite some time, or at least... Um, Nobody regularly cleans it. But it is not as dusty as one would expect for a house that has been completely abandoned. Does... The, the kids didn't come in with us, right? Like, we, the idea was we were going to no, go you, in. Yeah, we're the kids. We're no, the kids. You, watch, you watch the children evaporate behind you as you entered in through the building. And then oh. the, sl the door slammed behind you. This is oh, fine. Right. That's right. Yep. So it's a closed door, right? 
Yep, there's a closed door behind you, and then one that is cracked open in front of you. I attempt to open the door that closed behind us. You cannot. The door handle does not turn. We are trapped. <laughs> well, it looks like we only have one way to go. Yes, forward. Uh, I will listen at the door before opening it. You, uh, give me a perception check. Yes, sir. Okay. You can hear the sound of rushing wind. I, I looked at everyone else. I don't hear anyone on the other side. Gotcha. Shall we go forward? I don't really think we have any other options. Unless we want to tear down a wall. Certainly. That is an option. And then I go to open the door. <laughs> Uh, as a note, uh, Elder Druid, uh, I'm getting notes that you're just uh, black black screen on your stream. Oh, am oh. I? Yeah, Bertha Wallace says no video on Druid's oh, stream. There we go. Yep, Ooh. I fixed that. Should be good now. Oh, no. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Bertha. So I go to open the door. All right, and the door opens. So inside is a wide hall that runs the width of the house. A black marble fireplace at one end and a sweeping red marble staircase on the other. Mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a long sword. <laughs> and uh, with a windmill cameo worked into the hilt. The wood paneled walls are ornately sculpted with images of vines, flowers, nymphs, and cedars. Yeah, walk in. Yep, you, you, you can do that. Karin just kind of like looks at all the dust on the, the railing of the stairs. After you, Eleanor. Did we lose cat? Yes. Oh yeah, she's not in the uh she's not in the chat. Oh, oh no. Okay. There we are. Alright, what I miss. After you. You can move into the next room. Alright. After, after you, Eleanor. Okay. Ugh. can't go through the door. <laughs> it won't let me. You have to the drag directly through. Closed. I have to drag ar around. Because because the door is in the middle of two cells, it wouldn't let me through because the token was hitting, <laughs> hitting the wall. Hilarious. Yeah, you have to actually pass through the doorways. Gotcha. Uh, all right. These stairs go up, right? Not down. Yeah, the stairs do go up. Um, there's two. There's three doors to your north, uh, and the door you came from, and another door to your south. <laughs> if nothing else was a lie. Then there should be a child on the on the topmost floor and a beast in the vice in the basement. Mm. Well, if nothing else was a lie. We should. Do we want to go straight up or check the other rooms down here first? Destroying a beast seems more. Direct. If 
if there would be a solution for us getting out of here. The only reason I'd like to look at the other rooms, at least briefly, is so we know our backs are protected by no one. Thank you, Possible Gamer. Yo, bud, how you doing? And then uh, Balthor was like, I can check this door. This is a door, right? You didn't oh, scare me that time. <laughs> the doors. So, uh, I, uh, okay. yep, those Sorry. are doors. Well, I didn't know like you would click them. So I, he points like I can check this door if someone wants to check in here and here, just to make sure there's no one else down here. Certainly. Uh, I have right. discovered the broom closet. Search over here for north towards the fireplace to see if there's anything that's missed. We go over here. Do this door. No, Jordan, you want a perception check for that? Hold on. What? Where did you go? Over here. I want to see if there's oh, anything. Oh, to the fire in, in the fireplace. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can give me a perception check and hold on a second. Let me go around the. Go around the room here. Sure. All right. So, uh, Beothor, uh, the kitchen area is tidy, cleaner than the room you just came from, with dishware, cookware, and utensils neatly placed on a shelf. A work table has a cutting board and a rolling pin atop it. Uh, th oh, that's in the pantry on the other room, but the the dining. The, the one I went to. Of, yeah, that's the that's the one you went to. So, um, yeah, for you then, Crowley. A stone dome-shaped oven stands near the east wall. It's bent iron stovepipe connecting to a hole in the ceiling. Um, behind the stove and to the left is a um, a thin uh, door with like little slots in it. That you can see leads to a pretty well-stocked pantry. Um, and at first glance, when you look at the pantry, all of the food inside seems to be unspoiled. Ominous. <laughs> <laughs> Beothor. The centerpiece of this wood-paneled dining room is a carved mahogany table surrounded by eight high... A backed chairs with sculpted armrests and cushioned seats. A crystal chandelier hangs above the table, which is covered with resplendent silverware and a crystalware polished to a dazzling shine. Uh, mounted above the marble fireplace is a mahogany framed painting of an alpine veil. The wall paneling is carved with elegant images of, the, of deer among the trees. Uh, and red silk drapes cover the window, and a tapestry depicting hunting dogs and mounted aristocrats chasing after a wolf hangs from an iron rod bolted to the south wall. Um, if you want to try to find anything more detailed, I will need perception check. Yeah, and I'm gonna um, add, I'm gonna make a perception check for more detail on the art. I guess um, the tapestry. Okay. And, uh, um, same for you, out. Dave. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Drozen, you gave me that out? Oh, okay, you did give me the... Yep. The perception check. Okay. Yep, I got a 13. So, um, you don't notice anything, uh, in particular in the actual, um, fireplace itself, though in the paneling on the walls... You notice that there seems to be some serpents um, uh, and, and skulls inconspicuously woven into the wall designs. Uh, 
Um, would that have any significant, like, would that trigger something in any of our characters' heads? Not particularly. That you could immediately think of. Okay. Um, for Eleanor, when you go in there, there's actually a bunch of black cloaks neatly hanging in the closet. Um, and a top hat on the top shelf. Hmm. I shall, uh, spec these further. Okay. Perhaps look for some fashion labels. <laughs> Beothor. So, um, what you are able to find is that, um, upon searching the wall, you can, um, see that there are twisted faces carved into the tree trunks and wolves lurking amid the ki the carved foliage. This so place. they're definitely... They're not visible at first glance. It's only when you get up close and actually start looking that you can kind of see them tucked into the corners. Yeah, and a Baelthor comes out just saying, this place is more twisted than I think uh, first scene would tell us. I think okay. we, we need to be very careful. Mm, lovely. Found and nothing. Rue. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And Rue, for you, this oak-paneled room looks like a hunter's den. Mounted above the fireplace is a stag's head, and positioned around the outskirts of the room are three stuffed wolves. Two padded chairs draped in animal furs face the hearth, with an oak table between them supporting a cask of wine, two carved wooden goblets, a pipe rack, and a candelabrum. A chandelier hangs above a cloth-covered table surrounded by four chairs, and two cabinets stand against the wall. The east cabinet uh, seems to be sporting a pretty hefty-looking lock, And that is all that is notable in that room. Rue immediately leaps backwards out of the room, his fur fluffed up, and his ears straight up. As what I walk back see, into uh, into your uh, room, I, I see that you're like, I draw my sword at like the si sign of excitement. What is it? I, it's. It's a hunter's house. I don't want to be here. We should leave. Mm. Well, it seems that we can't leave from the front door. We may have to keep moving to find another way out. Mm. I came from the pantry. Or rather, a place to prepare food and then a pantry. Well, stop. <laughs> Found a closet with some fancy cloaks. But Probably no the food was way... uh, fresh. Yes, the food was fresh, but no way down that I could see. In uh, the dining room, this this is very richly decorated, but when you look at closer into the decorations. They have a very twisted style to them. Either these people are very darkly humored, or uh, there's something else wrong here other than a possible monster upstairs. But I'm ready to uh, go up and see what we find. Being that there's no other way down, up seems to be our only way of exploration. Um, Beothor can take point. Um, you know, he's a little bit less armored and a little bit lighter unless someone else wants to. If you ask him to do it, Crowley would do it. <laughs> But uh, I, I think he kind of like waits for you. Like he'll either bring up the rear or, or wait for someone else to tell him like what they would like him to do. And then uh, 
bed looks at others. Would you like me to take point on our way up? I think that would be for the best, based and, on what I've seen of everyone's capabilities. So he um kind of uh takes his axe. Space out Game of by the Studios. Room. Thanks for stopping he by. He isn't like we're just getting he, started. He Very just excited. Keeps it in his hand, ready in case, and uh, starts going up. Okay. All right. You guys get to the stop at the top of the stairs. Stop, and then I will take you from there. Crowley, do you want to go ahead of me, or if you will it? Very well. D- does that mean yes, <laughs> Rosen? <laughs> yeah, I don't know actually. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> sure, I'm good. <laughs> You both go to step at the same time and just bump into each other. I look at you confused, <laughs> like, you, what? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. So hold on a second. Well, fifty-six minutes in to session yeah, two, like, like in the grand there. scheme of things, you know, Curse of Strahd should go quite a while. We had some pre-roll and all that, but like we're we're just like session session two, man. Yeah, <laughs> we're in the death house. There you go. Ah, now the house is blacked out. Trixie. All right. I think we're back. So. No. No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Uh, the stairs continue upward. I'll say that. So. Um, there you go. Uh, as you guys approach the top of the stairs, unlit oil lamps are mounted on the wall of this elegant hall. Hanging above the mantelpiece is wood-framed portrait of the Durst family. Um, yeah, don't spoil it for me. You can see a, um, uh, Gustav and Elizabeth Durst with their two smiling children, Rose and Thorn. Um, cradled in their father's arms is a swaddled baby, which you can tell that the mother is regarding with a hint of scorn. Um, standing suits of armor flank wooden doors on the east and west walls. Each suit of armor clutches a spear and has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. The doors are carved with dancing youths, although close, um, close inspection may be warranted. The red marbled staircase that uh, started below continues up. Yeah, I, there I are door, doors both to your north and to your south. Uh, I think all that that means is less so that I'm spoiled for things. I, I didn't finish the campaign. That campaign didn't end perfect. But uh, uh-huh. I, it did get me to a point where I can. I was able to build a character that I feel set, fits the setting a little bit more. I guess so uh, Baylor's going to move slightly this. closer to the armor. He wants to see if this is a decorative piece, or is it something that would be used in battle war? Has it been something used in battle war? So uh, I'll roll a perception check if that's okay. Yep. Okay. So, um, looking at the armor, the armor does appear to be primarily decorative in nature. Um, gotcha. The steel is blackened, however, in an interesting way. Um, like, normally when you see blackened steel, you, you can usually see, like, the edges of it or scuffed and things like that, but this is almost a perfectly black piece. Interesting. Interesting construction. Very decorative, but whoever 
I did the blackening on this, took extra care for it. Yeah, the biggest thing I think for you that would set it aside is like, if you were to try to put that helmet on, you would not see anything. Right. It's not meant to be worn. Good mahogany. Or like, you can't wear it, but you know what I mean? It's a decorative piece. Yeah, Thank it's you definitely not something that would you would want to wear in combat. Welcome to the Wizards Guild. What was that? I said non-functional. Yes. It doesn't seem to have much purpose. Just something to show off. That's what people like this do. Instead of, uh, going out and using something like this, they show it off to people. It appears there are two doors ahead. So we continue up the stairs. You are blocking the way. I better we'll move over. <laughs> and, um... He wants to get a quick look at the rooms. We'll All right. Oh, Karin notices a room door right near him. All right, so you're going to head into that room? Is this a room or is this a fireplace? A fireplace. fireplace. Okay. So I guess I'll move here. This is a room, correct? Standby seems like that is a room. roll off the tongue thing. Uh, I'll call you standby. I'll see if, the, if it opens. All right. Uh, Alcarin's going to wait until you open that one before opening his. Or rather, the door by him. Okay. But he tries to see that door. <laughs> Trixie door. All right. I mean, you could step through the door. You can open the door. You should be able oh. to interact. Yeah, if you if you just click you were... on the button, I think. Oh no, I I thought you were setting something up. <laughs> nope. All right. So step through. All right. Oh, and so. <laughs> so yes. you open your you open up the door to what appears to be a conservatory. Gossamer drapes cover the windows of this elegantly appointed hall which has a brass-plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Upholstered chairs line the walls and stained glass wall hangings depict beautiful men, women, and children singing and playing instruments. A harpsichord with a bench sits in the northwest corner, and near the fireplace is a large standing harp. Alabaster figurines of well-dressed dancers adorn the ma mantelpiece, and, um... That is all that appears to stand out to you immediately. I'm gonna go over to the window and kind of pull the drapes aside. I want to take a look outside. Okay. So you pull aside, you pull open the drapes, and it's just a wall of mist. But give me a perception check. Sure will. It's in your skills. Yep. 15, 18. <laughs> All right. So you look out the window, and as you look out the window, you almost see as the mist seems to take the shape of the upper half of a zombie and slam up against the window before flying, flying off. <laughs> does it? Does it, like, rattle the the window and stuff like it make uh, Crowley like Ur, Ur, like yeah it makes fight a noise <laughs> Crow like Crowley lets out like a Ur, like a grunt like he's like ready to engage something but like the moment passes and like there's clearly no threat alright do you think we could what did you, say? you okay there yeah. manifestation of an undead 
Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, while I'm there, uh, I, I collect myself for a second, I, I try to open the window, just to see if the window will open. First try, the window does not appear to open. Right. The windows are shut. Hmm. Concerning. Give me gonna... another perception check. Fifteen. So you take another like quick look down at why the window is not opening because like you undo the lock latch and try to slide it up and you're like man it's stuck and you can barely see through the tip of the fog that it looks like someone nailed the window shut from the outside. It's as I'm like seeing this and realizing it because like I think I, I imagine I commented like yes the windows are shut. And then that drew my own attention to this, and then it's like, but not simply because they are locked. They appear to be nailed shut from the outside. Well, there is fog out there that snatches up undead dust and stuff, so I don't blame them. Yes, but you only nail things from the outside to keep things... Yeah, something is uh, trapped exactly. in here. Hmm. You can check in any time you like, but you can never leave. Alright, is anybody else going to look around the room at all, or are you guys good in here? Um, knowing that I saw really bizarre art downstairs, I want to get a closer look at the art up here. How bizarre. Da -na -na -da -na -na -da -na. How bizarre. The art's bizarre. It's bizarre but taller. Because we're on the second story. Hey, Ro. Hello? Nope. Did, did I lose you for a second? Wait, I didn't hear anything. I thought you were just looking up. Did you, did you give me an explanation? Oh, yeah, I did. So I was saying, just as a just as a passive, when you guys were um, looking around, uh, when you look at the statues for the dancers, you notice, like as you're getting up close to them, that the statues are not actually people. The statues are of skeletons. It's one of them tricky paintings, or depending on where you're standing. Yeah, basically. Like, when you're looking at them from a distance, because of how they're dressed and the way they're posed, they kind of look like people. But then once you start getting up close and you actually look at them, it's pretty obvious that they're skeletal in nature. Yeah, I told you this place is twisted. Don't like it. Firstly, the, uh, oh, go on, I'm sorry. I mean, firstly, decorating is just go. Secondly, creepy. People have strange tastes. Eyeing up one of the skeletal statues, just like people have very strange tastes. Creepy as it may be, it is not a threat to us. We should continue on. And with Okay. All right. So, um, you open what seems to be an undecorated bedroom. Um, it contains a pair of straw-stuffed mattresses, and at the foot of each bed seems to be a footlocker. Um, there are some tidy servants' uniforms hanging from hooks in the uh, closet. Does, do the foot lockers look locked? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to open this one. There. 
Okay. You open it. It appears to be empty. Feet! Okay, you open it and you find three finger joints. Like knuckles? Yeah, like three knuckles. <laughs> ah, okay then. You cannot tell which finger they are from. Do they look like that of children or that of adults or... Um, they definitely look, uh, smaller than a full-grown, like, man, but it would be hard to tell. Like, uh, smaller than a full-grown human male. Mm. All right, well, Alcar's gonna leave the room quickly. Join the middle of the room. So, I believe that room was servant quarters. Um, they have, there was a footlocker by one of the beds that had human knuckles within it. Well, oh, humanoid knuckles. You can't but, tell, they're bones. Yeah, well, bones. Whatever happened here was... Disturbing, to say the least. That is odd. Though I see no other signs of a struggle. There is no debris, no gouges in the floor, nothing knocked off the walls or knocked over. I'm sure if we keep looking, we'll find it. We, but we do know, and I believe Brew pointed out, if the windows are sealed from the outside, we know something was trying to be kept in. Uh, uh, Bailco will go up to the foot of the stairs and start. Uh, okay, you guys don't want to check this last I'll room to the north. I'll I'll open this door. Alrighty. All right. So, you open up what appears to be a library. Um, red velvet drapes cover the windows of this room. An exquisite mahogany desk and a matching high back chair face the entrance and the fireplace. Ab above the fireplace hangs a... Um, framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Situated in the corners are two overstuffed chairs and floor-to-ceiling bookshelves line the south wall. A, ro a rolling wooden ladder allows one to more easily reach the high shelves. Would anyone like to spend time in here and it might be much to learn. This is not our home. Definitely worth taking a look in here. I agree. We should spend a bit of time. Who knew? Perhaps the well, collection of books may give us some insight into what happened here. Or at least the type of person that lived here. Hey, didn't roll like garbage. All right. Well, the first the first thing you guys all immediately notice is that on the desk there are several items just resting on top of it: an oil lamp, a jar of ink, a quill pen, a tinder box, and a letter kit containing a red wax candle, four blank sheets of parchment, and a wooden seal bearing the Durst family insignia, which is a windmill. Hmm. Okay. So. You wish to All read right. through some books that that is fine. We can wait. Uh, but it holds no interest for me. <laughs> Crowley is confused. <laughs> yeah, basically. 
I will yeah, for the mo- wait out here. For, for the most part, all the books seem to just be random bits of literature, like Gone with the Wind and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Gone with the Windmill? Uh, the yes, Gone with the Windmill. The Gone with the Windmill is the most prominent title you've seen there. It was a good one. You've probably read it several times. 14 um, volumes. Weird. Don Quixote? Oh, God. <laughs> it's not Don Quixote, it's Don Quixote. <laughs> Uh, the desk, um, does it have drawers, or is it It just does like have drawers. Can I search the drawers? Okay. You do search the drawers. Um, when you search the drawers, the drawers are completely empty, except for a singular iron key. Now, um, for you, um, Eleanor, but like describe your search. Where are you just searching the room generally, like looking around for anything that seems out of place? Like, what are you doing? Well, now that I know that the insignia for the family is the windmill, I'm just seeing if there's anything odd about the painting. Uh, painting just seems to be a painting. It's like, I don't trust you, Pete. Why did that click? <laughs> 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 and you used to go through the books. <laughs> Alright. And give me a perception check when you're going through the books. Yeah! Alright. So... Um, like, those books, again, the books themselves don't seem all that special. Though, hold on, I gotta click the right button. When you move over here, you notice something interesting. So you notice that one of the books, it doesn't seem to be made out of paper. It's made out of solid wood. Hmm. Is it stuck or it doesn't come out? Are you pulling on it? I'm going to pull on it because I'm dumb. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Oh, this is weird. Click. Uh-oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, what? in another room, the wall spins around and Crowley is gone. Ah! Alright, you should be able to, uh, go through the door. Put the candle back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you step in? What am I stepping into? There's there's a, a secret room to your right, to your to your east. We see nothing. Uh, I way? see nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing popped up, so that's why I'm still. Oh. Oh, now it is just a guys. <laughs> There we go. I thought I revealed it. Oh, I don't see oh, it. That's a body. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it. So, uh, everyone else, give me a perception check. Like you just gonna... go, hey guys, and then I disappear through the bush. <laughs> I'm gonna pocket that key, by the way. Okay. All right. So you guys all just kind of hear a noise. As Eleanor seems to disappear behind a bookshelf. 
And no, Eleanor. Calls out for Eleanor. Eleanor, no. you're right. What happened? Found a body. That's not great. Yeah, so this room, uh, it, it does contain bookshelves packed with uh, tomes. Um, at first glance, you can kind of tell that they are seeming to be ritual tomes. You'd have to look further to get any kind of idea about what. Um, a heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet stands against the south wall. It's lid half closed. Sticking out of the chest is the skeleton in leather armor. So either just drop <laughs> dead or that chest ate him. <laughs> Are you going to inspect the body? And yes, she is thinking that out loud so people can hear her. And yes, she's going to inspect the body. Okay. It, so from, when you from go. From our perspective, it's like that Eleanor is in a complete. Like, we don't see Eleanor, right? Like, we don't see an open doorway. We don't see. No, like, you don't see anything. You just see a bookshelf. Like, oh my god, the bookshelf ate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If revolved or something. It, it slid back into place. And you could hear its mechanism kind of like clicking back down. Um, so when you uh, go to like closer inspect the skeleton, you can see that it belongs to a human who triggered a poison dart trap. Three darts are stuck in the dead adventurer's armor and ribcage. The dart firing mechanism inside the chest no longer fuck, uh, functions. Um, and clutch, clutched in the left, in the skeleton's left hand, is a letter bearing a seal you've never seen before. Hmm. Well, mm, poison darts, ropes. Ah, that's how he died. Wasn't a evil people eating chess. Good to know. And yes, again, all out loud. Are any of us like banging on the bookcase? Like, yep. Yeah, well, like thumping oh my in the God. wall, you trying, so <laughs> yelling. Specifically, Alcarin is running his fingers along the spines of the books to see which one feels out of place. One of them's wooden. Air perception check. All right. They're all books. So I'm gonna, of course, they're yeah, wooden. Yeah, that's a five, made of so, wood. like, Alcarn's not a very good perceptive person. Since he was told it was wooden, maybe he could get advantage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if if he is being aided, sure, I'll let him take I, advantage. I did yell one of them's made out of wood. That was fair. Yeah. Uh-huh. It does sound like Eleanor is trying to help Alcarn try to find... Yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll... I'll count. I'll, yep, I'll count. Go. Yeah. Not there that we he needed go. it anyway. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to try and get that uh, parchment scrolly thing to see what that is. Awesome. I found it. I did it. And after a few seconds, if no one immediately goes to pass through it, the door closes again. I, I would like well, to I brace it open. The door. It's not even on my thing. It 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 wouldn't be. Oh, okay. I'd like so to... if you if you yeah, if you go to brace it open, you could take like a couple of books or something. And uh, I take one of the hatchets the off my belt and just like stud it in there so it can't like between the wall and the bookshelf as it tries to swing closed. Okay, give me a strength check. Oh, I do it though. Let's see. Yeah. Good. Not my best work. Yeah, there you go. You, yeah. you, you, you stick it in far enough. Oh, do I? Giggity. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice to see Blake. All right. All right. And then Eleanor can finally leave the room. Well, I want to look at that parchment first. Okay. Uh, hold on. See if I... I may have a handout for this. Give me a second, please. Ooh.
Come on, guys. Yo! Oh, hey! Also, in the chest, you find this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ta da! Uh, okay, no, it doesn't give me. It doesn't give me an actual handout. But, I can do this. Are you putting something in my journal? No. No, it, no you, you can the, uh... share it with the party, so it's easier to just do it this way. Huh. TM is not supposed to make games, I should My most pathetic, like she's just starting to read this out loud. My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a, on a path to immortality. However, many souls you have bled on your uh, hidden altar, however, uh, many visitors you have uh, tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the what the hell? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you are not the one who brought me to this beautiful land. You are, uh, you are but worms withering in my earth. Who, who is this ego trip? Uh, you say that you are cursed, your fortune spent. You, you're, uh, you abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired a stillborn son. Oh boy, this is getting spicy. Uh, <laughs> someone cover Crowley's ears. I think he's too little for this. Uh, cursed by darkness? Of that I have no doubt. Save, uh, save you from your uh, wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are, your dread lord and master, uh, Strahd von Zarevich. Juicy. I don't know who this asshole is, but he knows how to write drama. And she, like, folds it up. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. And she just, like, peeks into the chest, and she knows the thing it already shot its globe there. She uh, just peeks to see if she sees anything else in the chest, uh, just since he's, like, sticking half out of it there. <laughs> yep. You do see three uh, blank books with black leather, co leather covers, three spell skulls, um, one is bless, one is protection from poison, and one is spiritual weapon. Oh. The deed to the house, the deed to a windmill, and a signed will. Uh, can you send those to me just because my brain doesn't know the process on it? How do uh, yeah, these sure. rolls work in this system? Can anybody use them? I believe uh, so. Technically, no, but it depends on the deed. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I typically say yes. Anybody can use them. Okay. Yeah, that's always how I run it. Like, as long as you can read it, you can use it. But the the raw, it's just to know, it's only if you actually can cast a spell. Which I'm like, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, I assume they're all in common. Yeah. Yeah. Take a shot. <laughs> Unless the crafter the is a real Strahd jerk and wrote it in a really Take a specific shot. language, they're usually. Alrighty, well, that was fun. Uh, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the uh, shelf of possibly cool tomes. And yeah, you can cool. tell that the 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 tomes and stuff they seem to be some sort of ritualistic nature. Um, Uh, specifically seeming to be relating to a necromantic cult called the Priests of Ossibus. Ossibus. Well, hmm. good thing I don't do that sense evil thing, because I feel like my brain would explode. <laughs> like, okay, time to leave the creepy room. Let's 
Excuse me, boys. What did you find? Uh, aside from the dude sticking out of a box and this weird letter and some scrolls, conveniently. Uh, not much else. <clears throat> they must have some value. They were hidden behind a bookshelf contraption. Oh yeah, we'll definitely dig into these books later, but that letter was a lot of drama. Right, guys? Mm. Uh, Crowley looks to Alcarin and says, it sounds like we have at least some idea of what was happening in this house now. Apparently so. Ritual sacrifices, according to the letter. Mm. And apparently an affair. Mm. Which would explain the uh, lady of the house's face. Uh, back to the painting, yes. Yep. Should we continue on, or is there more that you wish to search for this room? Oh, I'm, I'm stuck until I can't move. Baosaur kind of got everybody stuck. I'm also no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sending you a quick map. I'm, I'm typing something in to for you to look at. I'm quite physical. Okay. Just in the chat on the, on the screen. Oh, Mike can't get in? Mike can't get into <laughs> what? Apparently, it's giving him... Ah, uh, okay. It's giving him... Uh, so, unroll the 20s. Like, 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 the DM is hosting a game, so he's not seeing the join game. No, I just... I want to unroll d20. I, I don't see a map or anything. It's just a black screen. But I'm so unrolling d20. Out? Out? Oh, he's in, he's in now. Yeah, oh, he's okay. in... The, I'm there. I just don't see what whatever map you're talking about. Yeah, you don't have a token. Uh, uh, you have they probably don't have vision. Also, try scrolling out and then going down. Yeah. Okay, wait, hold on. I just did that. I see it. Okay, no, no, no. Wait. Yep, around. now All give right, me now a minute to put you now on the map. Uh, how do I get this out of here? Where's this? Where's this one? Right click a token. Wow! That squiggly border, though. Hey, look, our friend who's been here the whole time. <laughs> and why and he's... Vengeance. he's just very small. <laughs> and why didn't screw? There you go. And you should have control over it now. So you guys hear suddenly what sounds like footsteps coming up the stairs. I draw my sword. <laughs> I draw Again. my hat. I stash my shield and <laughs> double fist my warhammer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, her brain. <laughs> Who walks up there? Hold on. What do I see? Where am I? I'm on the steps. Yeah, you're, you're on the steps. You You're the see... green squiggly bordered. I see it. Yeah, you'd see the barbarian <laughs> first, uh, the redhead. And the fighter. I can move my guy? I'm, a, I'm yep. directly at the base of the stairs. Uh, yep. Yeah. Was he coming down or up? He's coming up. <laughs> okay, uh, I see. Is this, where's the top? Am I at the top? You're at, yeah. at, You're the, at the top of the stairs You're at the stairs landing now. on yes. our floor. Okay, okay. That's fine. And what do I see? Who who who's standing in front of me? A I would come up like, "Hey guys!" A redheaded barbarian. Hey! It's How another did I child. child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get lured in here by the children? Uh, yes, yes, I sure did. I think I'm lost. 
I don't know where I am. Where are you? I'm not. Okay. I, I don't think he's a child. Looks at it looks like it looks at everyone else. What? Maybe you guys can help me. I don't know. I don't know where I am. My name's Bramble. Uh, trying to get back home. I, I think he's one of the halflings. Ooh. So can you guys help me get back home? <laughs> it's nice to meet you all. Did you... What, what, are, what are your last memories of before you came to this area? That's a good question that I feel like the DM could answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're at the well, candy shop. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was what we talked about before you got enveloped by the mist. Okay. I'm gonna share that information. Children, right? Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got put in. Your your, your children brought you in here, but like, what got you into the mist? Um. Yeah, there there was a. I was trying to check out this this neat new monster. Um, and then there was no monster I was lied to, and now I'm here. Unless you guys are the monsters. But you don't look like not. We are not monsters. Was there mist? There was mist. It was very exciting, but there's no monsters. There's that mist snatching people again. It seems that your story is shared by all of us. We were all in different areas doing different things, and then the mist came and we were together. Is the mist the monster? Kind of. You are either an incredibly clever trickster, or you are, as you say you are, and a victim of circumstance as the rest of us. I really wish I was a clever trickster, though, because that sounds more fun. Encountered children that said they lived here and that Wait, there was a monster It's home. Oh, I see. So, uh, we, uh, Eleanor seems to have found some information that tells a darker story of this home. Maybe you'd want to fill him in. So, it seems to be the long of the short is pointing at the painting. The husband was sleeping around and he might worship some guy named Strahd and may have been doing some rituals and sacrificing in the house and definitely made the lady of the house pointing at the grumpy lady in the painting very upset. I don't know who created the monster in the basement, but one of them did. And that's why the children were outside asking for help. I don't know if they're alive or not, or if they just have creepy powers and locked us in the house. The children were absorbed oh. into the mist, just like the skeletons we fought. So you they fought skeletons? We did indeed, in the mists. I didn't fight anything in the mist. Yeah. We should probably the children in the basement, though, if they're in there with the monster. We saw no sign of a basement on the first floor. Our only option has been up. I don't think the basement's up. Me neither. Unless That's a silly place to look for the basement. Unless we missed... Ah, <laughs> missed the basement. Unless we missed something, like a hidden door. Which is quite possible. I'm gonna go downstairs and look for the basement. I'm gonna find the basement. I'm gonna run downstairs. <laughs> No, stop. To the basement! Oh no, runaway cart. Very, very Gene Wilder energy there. <laughs> no, stop, don't. So, <laughs> up then? Police. Uh, Crowley nuts the roof. Yeah, oh. police. Uh, <laughs> Bramble, you could 
desert down here for a bit, but you're not gonna find an entrance to the basement down here. Yeah. Who would who would put an entrance to the basement on the first floor? Like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it sounds like Ruin Crowley are just going up. Yeah, Ruin Crowley just like, all right, fuck this. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <How is. laughs> Up indeed. You can always fight like maybe rats. I'm gonna yell up the steps to my progress that I have not found the basement. Keep Shocker. looking. Are you sure they're in the basement? I do not think there is a basement. Or get up say to there the was top floor. And then there's a magic slide. The basement is a lie. <laughs> the basement is a lie perpetrated there's by ghost Bramble. children. Um, yeah, I guess I come back upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Oh. And we're gone. <laughs> and blah blah. I think we have to continue. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, this is a bit cramped. I can't move. Why can't mm -hmm. you move? That's weird. You should be able to move. Hey. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me reload and see if it's just it glitched out. Could be. Alright, hold on. Before anybody goes too much further. Oh, sorry. If I, if I moved uh, too soon. No, you're okay. Okay. So, um... Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, this is gonna be great. So we broke it. So uh, when you guys approach the top of the stairs, oil lamps are mounted on oak paneled walls, which are carved with woodland scenes of trees, falling leaves, and tiny critters. Do you want to give me a perception check while you're over there, Lewis? Yes, yes, I do. First uh, Tiny critters. Kind of fucked up shit of the uh, <laughs> Yo! Right, right away, so, you notice, I, I and all, you get. I, what I have to hit some, like last week. <laughs> so, this is great. You lean forward, and you notice immediately, um, that like hidden in the trees of the artwork at the base you can see dozens of bodies hanging from the branches oh man then, uh, he kind of looks a little bit aghast when he's like this is devil right here and he points it to it um, hold showing... on ah! <laughs> I hit it <laughs> It's like, I come to bring you world peace. Ow! <laughs> Admiring the, the the fucking molding. This shit's devilry right here. Fucking armor's like, no, I did that. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so How dare you? It, I'm slam at you. You would be flat-footed for this, but I still don't think an 11 hit. We still do flat-footed? But does that happen here in fifth? No, there's no flat footed. No. Oh. Okay. You would what you would do is if if you wanted to shove me or something and call me by surprise, I would have like disadvantage on the ball. Oh, no, you're okay. That kind of thing. Or you get a surprise yeah. round. Yeah, yeah well it's a, it this is this is a, this is a surprise round. So basically okay. that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. It's an eleven, it doesn't it doesn't hit. And then initiatives. 
Oh. Token. Click on your token first. Yes, click on your token first, and then and then hit uh, the initiative on your character sheet. Also, I still could not move my token. I can do everything else to it. I just can't move it. Oh, there we go. Last. How about now? Last. You, you, you actually may have been stuck in a square. Um, I can, yes. I just can't move because everyone's big butts. Uh, it might have been because he's in the same square as that door. Probably. Yeah, that's, Since that's, where is the that's door I think, what it was. Wall, yeah. big I opened the door, so he should be okay. I also can move. all the way to the bottom. It's like, what's going on? I also you... cannot move my token. How about now? They're all at 23 initiative. I don't know if that popped up. Uh, uh, yes. You did. Yeah, I can't move yes. once I'm in this space at all. Ah, am I last last or second to last? Cause you were second to last. Well, technically, right. I'm last because I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's so how that works. You, you, you can't fail. You can't fail initially. Unless you're dead, <laughs> and then he makes us go last. <laughs> yeah, but everyone else always goes first. Yeah, but also ten. Runs a very different kind of game. Let's yeah, be real. It runs Dungeons and Dark Souls. <laughs> and that's why I made shirts. Alright, Bramble, you are up first. Well, I'd run up the steps. You can find those shirts in her All online right. store. Uh, do you, is your movement at least 25 feet? Probably. Yes, 30 feet. <laughs> 30 feet? All right. You can technically move five feet further than where you are. Okay. So what is this thing? What do I see? I don't, I... You can't, You ran up the stairs, and it is animated armor. It is a suit of armor that has taken a sword, or uh, taken its fists, and threw them at... Uh, Touch in the Dark Souls, indeed. Baelthor. No, I don't. I, do I see it attack anybody, or I just see it moving? It, atta it attacked me, but it couldn't knock me down. Yeah, it, it attacked him, but it wasn't able to actually do anything. Ah. Oh, that's neat. I quickly put my shield on. That is neat. Um, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. Reading. Okay. Uh. Oh, can I try to trip it with my hoop <laughs> Like, you can, nice. I believe that. I believe that's athletic. No, by that, but I'm not good at that. <laughs> yep, that would be athletic. All right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna say that's not nice. Roll an athletic strike and see. Fifteen. Uh, I thought everyone should know the birthday boy just said chicken. Duh. Did Gandalf say chicken in a human voice? Or... Well, when we talk for him, he says chimkin. Mm. Chimkin. Chimkin nugget. Yep. Just like his brain is just one chicken nugget on a choo-choo track. <laughs> Right. I got a 15 for athletics, so I don't know what that happens. Possibly nothing. Possibly. Yeah. What were we rolling athletics for? I had to walk away. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. No, I just realized it's not athletics. It's a melee. It's a, it's a, um, technically it's an attack roll. So you would make a melee attack roll. But instead of shoving, you're just knocking it prone. No, I rolled less. <laughs> That's oh. fair. <laughs> All 
I mean, I, the, because that was my mistake, I'd be willing to take your modifier on that. Let's see. Uh, first roll is a 14, so it would be a plus 6, 20. Yep, Man. a 20. All right. Now I need to see if that actually hits. It does. You managed to knock him prone. Okay. Got him. I am back. All right. Don't mess with my friends. We're friends, right? Are we friends? Yes, small one. Okay. Don't mess with my friends. Yeah. We have to save the children. Is this the monster? It could be. Are we in the basement? <laughs> Maybe. We don't know. We do not know. This is a cursed house. Maybe basements are on the top of cursed houses. Dark deeds were done here. <laughs> Up is down, left is right. Dogs and cats living together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this man has no dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't certainly, want certainly, certainly does not have a dick. <laughs> what? I would guess we could search for that, though, if you want. Looks like it's my turn. Yep, it is your turn. Uh, no damage, right? I just knock him over. I'm not rolling anything else. I'm done. Yep, you're not. You're not rolling anything else. You're right. done. He did succeed uh, well, in knocking a prone. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, since the space around him is crowded, I'm going to cast a Sacred Flame. <laughs> so I need a dex save. A dex save? Okay. I don't know what prone does to that, if anything. Uh, no, um, it, it's, uh, it's a save not a ranged spell. If it was a ranged attack, you'd have disadvantage, but I think because it's a save or a spell, I think it just runs normal. If I had to go just off, you know, my head. Uh, 12 doesn't doesn't pass. Correct. Damn. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Wow! wow. <laughs> I did it. I did the most damage so far. So fuck y'all. <laughs> and that's my turn. That that is your turn. All right. This is a fair point. Uh, Crowley, you're up. Uh, Crowley, uh, is gonna try to pin this thing to the ground with his sword. So. Boop. Oh no! Yeah. Hate that. You um, because hmm. he's prone, you have advantage. Ha ha! Yeah. Let's try that again, and take the better result. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Unfortunately, does not hit. He's rolling around too much. You're just you're not able to get a solid hit on the armor. Mm -hmm. Like your sword keeps glancing off of it. I think this armor is not normal armor. <laughs> Beothor is going to uh, swing down with his axe, and since he's still down, I'm rolling damage. Yeah, I take one. All right, better than last week so far. Both better. There than you last go. Week. All right, you definitely hit. A five more damage. That was not right. good, but it's you know more to this damage. Uh, that is uh, that's his turn. He comes down and swings, trying to like make dents in it, so the others can uh, attack it. Okay, so that's five points. Yeah, there's five points. I'm not raging. Yep, you're. All right. 
There we go. You definitely put a noticeable dent in it. Um, but it's still moving. Alcarin. Well, all right. So, Karin. so question: Can I see it from here? Because like, there's no way I'm getting up and through everyone's position. Yeah, you're, you're technically in this corner one here, but it just won't let me put you there on the map. Okay, cool. So, um, considering I can't close the distance, I mean, you can move through allied tiles, can't you? With permission, yeah. usually. Yeah, usually with permission, but I don't think that we would stop him. You can always do finger bang. Um, yeah, that's basically where I'm going. Uh, so... Our party makeup's greatest weakness. Always. Throws <laughs> uh -oh. it dead. Destroy. <laughs> My cat is destroying things. Buddy. Like, who's destroying their house in the background. Anyways, buddy. Buddy. Um. So you. Kind of see Alcarin just kind of like mouth something, um, and you start seeing him glow. Um, he's not paying attention to what the color of the glow is, but you all see it as dark. Uh -oh. And he shoots off one piece. Little pew pew. Mm -hmm. Little pew pew indeed. Okay. Wow. That was disappointingly low. Okay. Fight me. <laughs> so, um, real quick, um, Alcarin and everyone else who wants to, give me a, a quick perception check. Alright. Hey, above ten. Hey, almost, almost twenty. Okay. Everyone who beats a 15 notices that when Alcarin throws his um, Eldritch Blast, it almost seems to... It, it appears to be made of shadow that takes the form of a throwing knife before impact. Well, that wasn't the prayer I was making. What is this accursed place? What the hell? It's my turn. <laughs> All right. You can definitely, again, you see as it dents the torso of the armor, um, but it's still moving. Eleanor. It's me. Yeah. Hey. You're right back. Technically, you do still have advantage, though. So. All right, gonna fish for crit. Yeah, I was gonna say if you want to fish for a crit. No, no crit, but no, nine. No crit. But yeah, nine, nine. If you do, you do poke it and dent it with your sword. I just look for the holes. Yeah. Alrighty. It's just a beat down. Okay, so uh, its only movement is to stand up because that's all it can do for that. But so he can act. Oh yeah, that's that's what I was oh, saying. That's uh, just his. That's his movement. But um, considering that he is angry, he got not. Or it, it, it like okay, armor doesn't feel emotions. So the armor is armor and takes two swings at Bramble. Ah. Uh, a 21 and a 23. I like it. And I'm sad now. So. Okay. 
Okay, so you're gonna take three and six. Okay. Has it managed just to get you with the old one two punch? The old one two. Ow! Leave the little one alone. Fight someone your own size. <laughs> it is Bramble's turn. <laughs> Piece of shit. Jerk. Yeah, right? Rude? <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, let's see. I think I'm going to have to whack him. Go ahead and whack him. Man. Yeah, let me whack him. Let's see what happens. I try to hit him with my hoop back. Say, Ow! Whack him. 17. I would like to believe that he took the name, he took the hoop pack you missed? as a weapon solely based off of how silly the name is. <laughs> because hoop pack is very you, you attempt to swing at him with your uh, hoop pack and you are unable to land a solid strike. Hoop pack. Oh. Um, can I move to the square next to me over here? Down one? Yes. Yeah. And you're not moving away from the enemy so there's no attacks about the game. Right. Yeah, that's just wanted to make some space. Here. Okay. Yep. Rue. Let's try that one more time. Oh, okay. Thirteen. Yay, five damage. <laughs> okay. Get him. Okay, so you can tell that the armor is looking rather dented, rather beat up, but it is still holding on. Crowley! I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> You're gonna hit it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to hit it. <laughs> okay. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not today. I'm not used to fighting something such as this. You managed to, like, glance your sword off the wall so it just sends, sends your strike astray. Mm -hmm. Alright. Beosaur. Alright. Beosaur is use a bonus action to try to shield batch. Knock him back down. Okay. And this is a, you just oppose athletics. My athletics versus your athletics or, or, or dexterity. Or um, acrobatics. Right? Athletics or acrobatics. I'm sure he's very light on his feet. Oh, chance. Alright, well, there you go. You managed to get him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I bashed him with my shield. Uh, and then he's on the ground again, and I'm gonna smack him with my axe with advantage. Okay. Um, take that 19. Alright, you definitely hit. Oh, another one on the damage side. Of that one. Five, another five points of damage. It's damage. All right. It is barely holding on. All I can do. You like this thing is almost completely uh, ca caved in. They're just smashing another slash into that armor, 
I was like, finish him. Last him, Alcarin. Alright. Yep, Alcarin, you're next. Let's try this again. Let's these blasted lands stop interfering. Twenty four hit. It does. Um, Alcarin, give me a perception check as well. After or before the damage? Uh you can roll the da it doesn't matter. Roll the damage first. I want to roll All damage. Right, better. All right. You blow the thing apart. God, these perception rolls are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done wisdom as a dumb stat. <laughs> I'm rethinking this now. So, if everyone else in the room wants to give a perception check, they're more than willing. Cool. More than capable of it. Like... Yay! Here, I'll make a perception check. Sure. Oh, well, that, that I could roll one of four. <laughs> of course. So, everyone who beats a 15... Um, you notice that his Eldritch Blast this time, instead of taking the shape of a dagger, almost seems to take the shape of a face made of Shadow, winks at him, and then dis goes to, to the target. <laughs> Jeez. That's That's like fucking dope! <laughs> That's so cool! <laughs> well, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I, you have to teach me how to do that immediately he didn't see it so he has no idea what you're talking about <laughs> yeah oh he didn't see it no nope. my reception is too low oh I was focusing the like, character was focused on the fact that like this isn't the usual spell that I use what the fuck what is happening what the hell well I'm still I need you to teach me how to make winky faces when I attack things. That's very neat. Well, Winky. when you close one eye, uh, one of your eyes, and kind of smirk, that usually works. No, not that kind of winky face. Like a shadow <laughs> winky face. Well, if you what? do it in the dark... Did you not see the shadow winky face? Oh, no, I did. I'm just, I'm just making fun. I have no idea what any of you are talking about. He just stares at you all blankly. I just want to learn the shadow of your face. Can you please teach me that? Crowley I have no takes idea a... what you're talking about. Crowley kneels down to inspect the armor, see if there's any signs of uh, possession. Like maybe some ectoplasm or something like that. Um, so, yeah, give me, a uh, give me another perception check. Eh. It, it's a suit of armor. Yep. It's in pieces. The pieces look very heavily damaged at this point. Is it, like, scattered was, uh... all over the place, the armor? Like, an old... Yeah. Yeah, it, it blew apart when... Kaboom. When it was hit. I would like to put some pieces of the armor on. I mean, it's just crumpled armor. No, not not for like protection, but for like I'm a spooky monster. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you're, kind of you're small enough. <laughs> Do as you will. I think that the armor is far too damaged for it to be of any use to you. Not that it was built for your size to begin with. But it looks pretty cool. You, you, you say so. I do say so, I just said so. It is a trophy. That is fine. But, uh, 
I'm more concerned that, and it looked like you, you know, kicking it with his foot. There is nothing in this armor. It attacked us. There are other suits like this. When we, if we we turn down, we have we must be. Who knows what else might attack us if it is not alive. Uh, hold on, Bramble. As you put on the armor, you put on the armor, and you notice that it is definitely like sticky on the inside. Real quick, guys, I'm gonna have to run a. Uh, uh, I'm gonna run a one minute ad real quick because uh, it's threatening to run. Who knows how long I of an ad if I don't do group. that on my own now. So um, I'm gonna run that real quick. I say. You can give me a perception check. Ew! Ooh. And neat! It's sticky! I have ghost goo on you. Now. Ectoplasm. Mm. You can give what me a that? perception check. I do. What do I perceive? You perceive that it appears to be mostly dried blood. Oh, okay. But it's sticky, so it's like new dried blood? Yeah, like mostly dried blood. It's tacky. not all the way dry. It's, yeah, it's tacky oh, okay, to the see. point where it's sticky. Oh. Ew. I think there was a person in here once. Because now he's on me. Ew. Perhaps getting out of the landing would be useful. Uh-huh. We should continue on. I agree. And we have rooms up here to explore. Where are we continuing on to? What is the... I can't even see. There are rooms here that we should check before we continue further up. Um, and I, a bear, a bear floor is going to open this one. Amazing. Okay. Um, can I... Yeah. I can heal myself, right? Yes, I can. Yep, yeah, you have a moment. You can touch yourself. I'm gonna touch myself. Okay, Beothor, don't. You can move that square forward if you want. Just don't move any further. Oh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait till you say it's okay. All right. It's one of those things I didn't know if I had to go in there to see anything. That's it. No, no, I'm using Fog of War, so I have to reveal things for you as I you go. So I step into the room after I open the door. Yep, so dusty shelves line the walls of this room. A uh, few shelves have folded sheets, blankets, and old bars of soap on them. And a um, cobweb-covered broom hangs on the far wall. Now, as you step into the room, the... Card, the cobweb covered broom comes to life and comes flying at you. Uh, give me a, give me a reflex save to see if you get another round of surprise. Okay. Let's see. Um, at danger sense, so I get an advantage. Nice. Hopefully, I get better than that. It still sucks. <laughs> okay. Well. Well. Well then. Okay. Are we serious about the going to a new ship for a broom? Yes. Well, it it takes an attack at Baelthor, but Baelthor ducks <laughs> as you just see a, the broom like trying to sweep Baelthor away. We could just not do uh, it. We just ignore it. And then we will the need broom. initiative. Take on your character first. Yes. Oh right. Okay. Uh, I'm not respectable. Yeah, of ten. Beothor just swept off his feet. He just is not ready for oh, the yeah. room. Crowley, what's your dex? Uh, none. All right, 
so I will go first then. You look at me and you think I have decks. Because <laughs> I am larger than charge. Alright. So Bramble is up first. Uh, I am going to, I don't know. So the broom is attack. Yep, the broom is attacking Beosaur. In the room with me. <laughs> I'm all the way back here. Um, I don't know. I I mean, I kind of want to ride the broom, but I don't Another think I'm in a position to ride the broom. What the shit? I didn't tell it to do that. Oh, uh, the broom doesn't exactly come with the seat, so um, no, like a witch. I sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's moving. I assume and fly. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna delay for now. I'm gonna delay. Okay. Is that a thing in this? Yeah, you can essentially you have, you say what the trigger is of what you're gonna do. So like, if like if it gets into range, you're going to try it. Like since you say, oh, I want to ride it, you can say, well, if it gets into my range, I want to then grapple it. Right. I'll, yeah, I want to jump on it and grapple. It. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ride it like a witch. Okay. That's so cool. I want a magic broom. <laughs> All right. Uh, like, I don't Eleanor. see this as a threat at all. This is just neat. <laughs> it's just neat. It, it's a neat. All right. Since you're delaying, it is Eleanor's turn. All right. It's, uh... Huh. Okay. What do we got? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is the correct response. Well, I guess. Kachink. I'm gonna shoot it because this is stupid. <laughs> believe it or not, that hits. Hooray. We choose to believe it. Ex excuse me, dice. Thank you. Eleven. All right. You managed to take a pretty sizable chunk out of it. All right. It is still floating around, though. Sorry about the and ad I'm just break, like, guys. This I, is... tried to, I ran that what? ad to prevent it from running more ads. Rue. And then it ran more ads anyway. I'm super sorry about that. Look at that and see what we're fighting. Oh, see, it's a, see it's a broom, and then just walk away. <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> I refuse to fight a broom. <laughs> I, 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 I really love this. Just like you know, he's being attacked by a broom, but like we think that he's just fucking around in there. Like, Banthor, stop playing around. There are dangers afoot. The broom is alive. It's a broom, Banthor. <laughs> If you get swept by a broom, you deserve it. <laughs> it is Alcarin's turn. Yeah, he's just gonna get up off the the bottom of the stairs. Like this is stupid. He, I, Jordan, you just move. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> like that was so stupid. Uh, he just kind of goes checks. Looks in. Opens the different door. Oh, you were not joking. It is actually a room. Huh. And that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Love this. All right. I like how and we're all just like, is... what? <laughs> Rally. Right then. I guess it's my turn to pick a door. <laughs> I'll open this door. <laughs> to the north. 
<laughs> What's going on up here? And then the rug comes alive! <laughs> You're not gonna be attacked by a mop, are you? We get a magic carpet and a magic room. This is a successful journey. Yeah, it's been a good good session, guys. <laughs> GG. GG. So, real quick, hold on. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for you to get the animated um, rug token out. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Okay, alright. The, <laughs> the double doors to this room have dusty panes of stained glass set into them. Designs in the glass resemble windmills. The dusty, cobwebbed, filled uh, master bedroom has burgundy drapes covering the windows. Furnish, uh, furnishings include a four-poster bed with embroidered curtains and a tatter and tattered gossamer veil. A mashing pair of empty wardrobes, a, a vanity with wood-framed mirror and a jewelry box, and a uh, padded chair are all visible. A um, rotting tiger skin lies in the center of the floor in front of the fireplace. And it has a there's a dust-covered portrait of Gustav and Elizabeth Durst hanging above the fireplace. A uh, web-filled parlor in the south e southwest corner contains a table and two chairs. Um, and resting on the dusty tablecloth is an empty porcelain bowl and a matching jug. Alright, what's um, is this a window up here? Yeah, it's a window. Okay. Normally, th these other windows over here have like window markings, so I couldn't tell this. Oh, interesting. I see the window marking on mine. Oh. Hmm. Uh... Oh, it might be. It might be because it's behind shadow. Yeah, it's probably because it's behind the shadow. Yep. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. There yep. we go. All right. Yep. There it is. I guess I'm gonna go into this room and just kind of like investigate the room. I don't. I, since we're in combat, I don't know how that really works. Yeah, I'm but, gonna leave. I'm gonna leave you there for now. I'm just. And I'm around. gonna get back to the broom. Sure. But it's very important. It's a very important broom. The broom is going to take two sweeps at Phaethor. It's not even sharp. Uh, a 14 uh, and a 20. Uh, 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 20 hits. Okay, you will take five bludgeoning damage as the handle of the broom, like, swings down and bonks you on the top of the head. Uh-oh. Ow. Blasted thing. <laughs> it's your third bail for. I just come at it with like trying to chop it down with my axe. <clears throat> okay. Um. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is this is this is my life, guys. I, I'm so sorry. I will politely now let someone else go and save me from the broom. Please, tiny, uh, Please end up save me from the broom, <laughs> or try to jump in here and ride it. Uh, you know what? Also, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'll, I'll I'll take the attack of opportunity. I'm gonna move back. So the Kinder can defeat the broom. Yep. Wow. Okay, I can move through. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he can uh, so, as uh, yeah, as you're stepping away, the broom whacks you again right on the top of the head for another five damage. Jesus oh, Christ! Oh my God! My it's God! A broom. Broom. It really is Dungeons and Dark Souls. Ow! Oh, ow! Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, the Disney animated uh, Sword and Stone. Yeah, right. That's what I've been thinking about the whole time. Fantasia. Well, this is not a nice broom. Not very paragon. The broom has done more damage than the armor did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it clearly doesn't want to be written. And you might tame him. This is a very violent looking broom. I guess I'm gonna have to attack the broom then. I can move. <laughs> I can move here. Uh, I don't know. How. <laughs> you can move I can move yeah, through. you could. You, you can move through him. Yeah. Okay. Can I attack it with a rapier? Yeah. On guard, broom. I cannot believe we are wasting our energies and talents. Excellent. I've never fought a broom before. This is so much fun. Fifty. Could just That's close the door. You do hit. We did our. That's <laughs> twelve damage to the broom. <laughs> My <laughs> God. <laughs> Shatter the broom. <laughs> That's so much comparable I, damage. Dueling with the broom. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Chop, chops up the broom. The broom falls to little pieces on the ground. Little wooden pepperoni slices. I don't yeah. know why you're having so much trouble with this room. It's surprising. Uh, <laughs> why didn't she just close the door? Brooms don't have thumbs. Listen, you. That's a good quote. Well, what else That's is in the room? Very good. Brooms don't also normally move. Is this the whole thing? Yeah, is this the broom closet? I'm gonna do for dinner. After yeah, this it's the broom closet. There's like linen hanging on the walls pizza. and stuff. If you sure wanted to like bread. grab a sure sheet, cut a couple holes sauce. in it, and hide, and make yourself a ghost costume, you could. I'm pretty sure we have pepperonis. Uh, yeah, what? Pizza. Kinda want to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's your vibe, I mean. But um, no, there's nothing like of note in here. Like it's lovely. Oh, do we have? Do we have non bread? I know you this can is hear a boring me. closet. <laughs> All right. Then back to Crowley because you Crowley can't was say that was a boring room. closet after the broom tried to kill you. Well, now the broom's not in it anymore, and it didn't try to kill me. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? <laughs> to be fair, the broom only tried to kill Beethor. Right. What did fair. you do to the broom to make it angry? Is my question. Normally, brooms don't do that. Alright, so I'm just so, investigating the room, I guess. Yep, you are investigating the room. So, um... Alright, so the first thing we noticed is that there um, was a jewelry box, if you wanted to look at that. Yeah, it's over here, right? On the... Yeah. Yeah, I'll look at so, the box. The jewelry box, I will I will type up its contents, but it is um, a the jewelry box itself is made of silver and gold um, and is worth 75 gold. It contains three gold rings worth 25 gold each and a thin platinum necklace with a topaz pendant that is worth 750 gold. I want Damn. you to know I really appreciate that you, you took the time to tell us all of that. I'm not taking any of it, nor mentioning that it was there. <laughs> Amazing. This isn't my oh house! My it's not my stuff! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't live here. I'm gonna open this other door while they're <laughs> in the master bedroom. <laughs> Oh yeah, and you open up a, a like little door on the far side of the room, and you notice that like that tiny little um, thing that everyone's been getting stuck in in the corner is a dumb waiter. Yeah. Mm. Over here by the teapot, the empty pot. Rather. Yep. It's, it's, yep. It's their chamber pot. <laughs> okay, so who's opening which door now? I I'm opening this door. Ah, okay. It's the broom closet! Again! No. It's the knife closet. It's the knife closet. It's where they keep their knives, their animated knives. It's the toilet. It really is. 
Anyone need to go? Yeah, this dark room contains a wooden tub with clawed feet, a small iron stove with a kettle resting atop, and a barrel under a spigot in the east wall. A cistern on the roof is used to collect rainwater and uh, bring it down here. Okay, just walk away. Uh, yep. I guess this last door here, I'll try to open. Okay, the careful, one there, might be, more there might be more There might be more rooms. Be careful. A house this size surely doesn't have only one broom in it. Another bedroom. Okay, and hold on. Don't move too far. <laughs> Got more brooms coming. Uh, let me describe the room first. Uh, dust and cobwebs shroud an elegantly appointed bedroom. Um, uh, double doors on the opposite side um, open up to reveal a balcony. Hold on a second. Where the hell am I? Oh, okay. Yep, there we are. Um, this bedroom um, contains a large bed, two end tables, and an empty wardrobe. Mounted on the wall next to the wardrobe is a full-length mirror with an ornate wooden frame carved to look like ivy and berries. There are also other... Uh, doors. Gotta reveal one. There we go. There's a whole black box up here yet. Yep. That, yep, that, that's there on purpose. Oh, okay. I understand that. And try this door. Okay. This door opens to reveal... You can just see a crib on the far side of the room. It does appear to be a nursery. So, he calls over... The child's... This seems to be the children's child's room. Or where a baby would have been taken care of. Now, when you look at the crib, the crib is draped in a black blanket, but it does almost look like there's something inside it. Uh, he calls everyone to come over here because he want he this might be where uh, the children told us to go. Make I'm sense. gonna make sure this door is safe before I leave this room. Yeah, clear a room before you leave it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, Al Karen kind of he points it out that this might be where uh, children want to. Now, when you open the door, you get a mouthful of dust. Yeah. It is just a closet. I close the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there a broom in there? No. <laughs> no broom. It no broom in the closet. Needs a broom. Is this a box? No, that was the um. Uh, well, there there is a jewelry box on top there of that. There sure is a jewelry box there. Oh. Too bad <laughs> that you might notice. <laughs> okay, I'll t I'll finally type up the stuff then. <laughs> hey. 
I love this everyone gang up, group up, there's a baby in here energy. Like, hey, <laughs> it could be a broom. It could be. It could be. It could be. It could be a broom. Right, obviously a broom. not spoken as my character, but. Speak for yourself. My character. Let's, let's, uh, let's bring the tone back, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna step past Bathor if he lets me. You can move right past him. He's just waiting for everyone to gather because we were told to find children's room, and that that was where there might be a monster. The monster was said to be in the basement, which does not exist. The child was all the way up here. Is the child in his crib? I'm gonna listen for any, like, normal baby noises. Okay, give me perception check. Okay. You do not hear anything at all. I'm gonna reach out and pull the the covering back. Okay. This is straight up a you, horror movie. <laughs> when you pull the covering back, you find what looks to be something baby shaped. Very tightly swaddled. A baby-shaped thing, but not, in fact, a baby. Does everyone know what swaddling is? Yes. Yep. yep. When you wrap okay. up a baby. Or yep, a cat, just making sure. Or a puppy. I'm gonna... unswaddle a little bit to see what I can see what it is. So, you're unswaddling, and, like... The first thing you notice as you pick it up is that the whole thing is unusually soft, and as you start unswaddling it, the whole thing just unravels to be just a lump of fabric. That's concerning. There's no, like, blood or bones or anything anywhere in the crib? Nope. Well, there was a baby here at some point. <laughs> we think. We well, hope. There's, there's a crib. Um, inside the room, were there, like, toys and whatnot? Or was there just a crib in there? It is just the crib. This could have been just, then, a nursing room. And there could be that. It yeah. could be... Well, it could be... In mourning for the stillborn child. It's also a possibility that I can fly the black on it. I will re-swaddle the swaddling, put it back, and recover the crib. Uh, after I see everybody walk from the other direction, I want to see if I missed anything, and I go and check that out. I'm sorry, what are you doing? I put myself in the room with the tiger rug because I didn't go in that room and I saw everybody leaving that room and I wanted to see, like, oh, everybody was there. Oh, yeah. It, it's a room. You Is there anything of note that I would find interesting? Not particularly. I mean, if you want the teapot in the far corner, there's definitely a very nice, ornate teapot. Is it, I mean, and I never got around to checking the, the, uh, the this room here. I never really went. I don't know if that's a, a landing or what, but I didn't go there. So if you want to, it's uh, new. yeah, that's that's an un undescript balcony. Like it's a balcony. There's nothing um out there. No furniture or anything. It's just a standing place. Okay. Okay. Where yeah, one ponders the day. Hold on a second. Tiger Rug, too. So, one thing happens. As you all exit the nursery, you can see 
what appears to be the spectral form of a nursemaid. And I'm going to need another initiative. See you later, everybody. Uh, uh, Crowley, did you ever use that vigilant blessing on your initiative? What? Bam. I gave you a... Oh, you gave me something last session. No, I didn't. Advantage. <laughs> Sorry, sneezing. Um, I guess I use that now? Or is it yeah, too late? Yeah, you can. All right. It's no, technically you your can. next, but... Oh, I didn't remember about it. I'll let you take it now. It's fine. All right. Technically higher. Actually higher. I forgot you gave that to me. Thank you for reminding me. All right. Eleanor, you are up first. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I did the thing. I'm drink it. <laughs> drink it. Oh, no, drink it. You again. can still pass through oh, them. I, <laughs> I did it. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'll be right back from some dead lash. An apparition. All right, so. I'm gonna do me a I'm gonna do me one of them uh oh it's spooky. Uh <laughs> gonna do me one of them uh Gonna do me one of them smokes. Okay. Because it's spooky. I'm scared. <laughs> 21. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe. You do hit. Great. So this is not including the smoke damage. I'll be right back. Um, that was awful. So you just see like a bunch of bright radiant light just erupt from her rapier as she's like <laughs> stabs at it with her rapier. I also may have accidentally blinded you for a split second. Just So your blade passes through it. Now you notice that the uh, like actual hit from your rapier isn't as effective as you would have expected it to be, but the smite came through and definitely helped you do a noticeable chunk. Which it probably didn't appreciate. And it doesn't look happy. Bathor. The evil that plagues this place. Here, and he will. Uh, he will actually use a bonus action and go into a rage. Okay. Seeing that this, seeing the the ghost that is possibly what's uh you know causing them to be stuck here. Will also, uh, uh, he will attack. He will use the one less attack and give himself an advantage. No, already. Uh, Twenty to hit. You will hit. 
Okay, good. So that's actually uh, 13 points of damage. Okay. Alrighty. It is still standing. Or floating. And then it is the Spectre's turn. And I'm back. Uh, does a 15 hit you, Eleanor? No. Okay, then it does not hit. Ah. Crowley. Crowley seeing the specter form in the room. Uh, draws his sword, readies a shield, and runs at it. As he swings his sword to try to strike the creature, he says, uh... Be gone from this place, ghost. Your time is no longer now. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Big knock with no with no dice game. <laughs> it's been it's been rough today. It's been very rough yeah, tonight. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so the specter is the specter like sidesteps, and your sword just clangs off the um off the metal. And you can definitely tell that you have um, done some damage to the blade of your sword. It's still usable, but you're probably going to want to look at a new one before too long. It wouldn't be the first time. I action surge! Oh. I'm going to attack it again! I'm not done with you! I'm <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, fucking goddammit. Bye, guys! I'll see you next week. Remember that you have an inspiration point from last time. Oh, uh, sure. Why the hell not? Let's let's just blow the whole load on this. Let's go, inspiration! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There you go. <laughs> I hit something. You I did the fighter thing, guys. I did the fighter thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you managed to do exactly enough damage to make it dissipate. It looks really badass in game when you when you <laughs> I'm not done with you and All right. So your sword passes through it. You can kind of see as it reduces itself to mist and fades away. But you are out of combat. Hooray. Crowley inspects the damage done to his sword and uh, just kind of like Otherwise, idols around. Rue will step up to Crowley, put a head on your shoulder, and say, May Selene continue to guide your path. I grant you a vigilant blessing. Alright. <laughs> because it's infinite use, just one person at a time. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Stupid. So, Selene, are you guys gonna. Or whichever gods may wish. There is work to be done. Well, that was unsettling. Mm -hmm. Where's Brian? So, did you guys want to continue searching this room, or are you moving on? Yeah, what's going on up here that I can't see? So, Unless there's a wall there or something, I, I can't tell what's going on. Uh, there is a wall there. Um, that's the wall that has the mirror on it. Um, you guys are more than welcome to inspect the mirror, if you wish. Yeah, why not? Sure thing. Perception? It would be perception. Alright. I mean, it's just kind of idling around as I'm just... I suppose I look at it. Yeah, I don't shit. Nope. Jesus, fuck. Oh, uh, no. So, uh... Yeah, Alcarin's blind, apparently. Apparently. Does anybody else want to do a perception check? No. Here we go. <laughs> there was a mirror in there? 
Uh, I guess I'll take wow. it. Nope. Well, now that I'm done embarrassing myself. How about you, Bramble? You gonna give me perception? Sure. Hold on. Here. Yeah, so as far as everyone can tell, it's a mirror. Alright. Yeah. I, uh, I'm gonna walk back out down the hallway here to the, the stairwell landing. And, uh, what kind of weapon was the suit of armor using? He wasn't. Oh. He was using his fist. Uh, I was just so you have do one. remember, you do remember down on the first floor, there was a longsword hanging on the wall. Hmm. My weapon is damaged. I need to replace it. I'm going to take the one that was hanging on the wall downstairs. Oh, I just, I just announced them. this to everyone. Like, I'm just this is what I'm doing. And I, I'm just going to walk downstairs and go do that. I will follow him so he doesn't get attacked by any errant brooms. Hey, yeah, watch out. Yeah. I'm not the one you got to worry about brooms for. Oh. <laughs> 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 I go. Yep. Move. Oh. It, you're still at the top well, of the I stairs. I can't move myself from map to map. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're fine. You, it's gonna take you a few minutes. It'll take you about five minutes to walk. Sure. Yeah. Down, yeah. get the thing up off the wall, and then come back up. Yeah. I wasn't and sure that... if there was like an interaction that would happen if I tried to take it, or uh, I was just. No. It. 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 You you take it again. The most noticeable feature of it is the fact that the hilt is a windmill. Yeah, but it's a longsword, and mine's broken. So it is a longsword. I, I like stab my sword into the into the wall. Like it's shook. It's like that's where it goes now. Uh, when you stab your sword into the wall, uh, give me a perception check. All right. So, even with an 11, mm -hmm. you hear a squeak, and then blood starts to run out of the wall. Oh my god, you killed the house! <laughs> that is... abnormal. I, I, I suppose I would hesitate a few moments, but unless something comes to strike out at me or anything, like... That's probably very scary to someone who isn't already an undead. <laughs> yeah. That's probably very scary to normal people. To Crowley, that's abnormal. Uh, give me a nature check real quick, Crowley. Alright. I know you're, that's probably not your best that, but let's get it anyway. Plus one to it. It's higher than my perception. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, from the squeak, you could tell that that squeak was probably a rat. I could not do that a second time if I tried. Just kill a rat in the other side of the wall without trying. I wish I could do that in real life. <laughs> Been hunting this rat for yeah. months. Sorry, tangent. Oh no. Oh no. But yeah, I, again, I don't think I interact any further. I just go yep. get myself my nice new sword. Alright. Um. And then head back up. To see what, Alcarin, what they've been up to you... while I was gone. Yeah, Alcarin, what are you doing? Are you just standing there staring at yourself in the mirror? Uh. Basically, just kind of watching everyone else and seeing what's going on. Considering okay. he has no idea what the fuck's going on. Because he's okay. blind. 
record your perception at least. Yeah, I mean, you can give me another perception if you want to continue looking around. Sure. It's been enough time. God damn it. It rolled. It was almost an 18. Almost an 18. But no, oh, we're, no. we're continuing. We're continuing on the track of he's just a blind, daft idiot. Yeah, so you guys will see Alfred get really close up to the mirror looking at something, and then he just kind of like turns his head and walks away from it. He gets real close to the mirror, and it's like, I need to moisturize, and then walks away. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, Rue, actually, give me a perception check where you are. Damn it. You do not notice anything out of the ordinary. Uh, so Panther <laughs> walked into one of the double set doors. Chat, I'll be right back. Yep. I'm so gonna, uh, go you walk it, through the double set door. That is another balcony. Um, Plus Crowley. So you so. step out into what seems to be outside. However, there is an impenetrable wall of fog that seems to be swirling around you. Do um, I see images like Crowley? So we look out the window. So you can like give me a perception check. You definitely see, like, movement, but you're not sure what it is. And this is outside, though, right? Technically. And how does it feel? Like, does it feel any different than when we, before we entered uh, the house? Um, it feels the same as the inside of the house. But the inside of the house definitely, like, has a different aura than the out than, like, when you were outside in the mist. This has a heavier atmosphere. Yeah, Baelthor walks back out of there, closes the door, like, almost like a shade wider, just, of the... That before we, you know, looking out the window, that's one thing, but to really experience that we are in, while we are in this house, we are truly trapped by whatever has come on this land to create this darkness and this ill will. And we still have to find a basement. way to it. Eleanor, do you want to give me another perception? Is that what you're doing? Sure. Hey! Alright! So, you notice two things as you're, like, really looking around that wall, looking around that mirror. First thing is that the mirror, the vines... So the vines, when you look really closely at them, the, the little berries along them aren't berries. They're eyeballs. I'm back. And then you notice that one of the eyeballs looks um, particularly fleshy compared to the others. I don't know why is it fleshy. It, do I notice if it's moving? It does not appear to be moving. It just looks very moist. Oh, thank God. Oh, I don't like that it's moist, but I'm glad moist, it's moist, not moist, moving. Moist, 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 
I'm gonna hate myself, but... Uh, and she, like, makes that noise of... Uh, and then she, like, just goes to touch it. <laughs> so you press it, and the eyeball, like... When you go to press into it, it feels like a real eyeball, and it squishes underneath your finger. Um, you guys can kind of see as the pupil goes crazy for a minute, and you hear a click as a door opens up behind it. And Eleanor hates everything, just as she's like furiously shaking off her hand, like. Bleh. And inside seems to be a flight of stairs, heading upwards. I am the finder of secret doors again! Oh. Why does it sound like you're drowning? Because she touched a squishy eyeball. And she's grossed out. Okay. And she takes a peeky boo. Another door has been found behind the mirror. Yep. And I had to touch an eyeball. Very good. Go. Are these Get upward our, stairs? Right. They are upward stairs. Cool. Sneaky upstairs. Sneaky, sneaky right. upstairs. That must... uh, I guess you gotta pull me over there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move you all myself. Just give me a second. Wee. Eleanor found herself expelled by the house. Um, <laughs> Alright, so yeah, line yourself up however you wish. But there you are. And so, when you um... <clears throat> oh, hold on. When you approach this, uh, the hall is completely choked with dust and cobwebs. The door to the area is held with a padlock. Uh, uh, we could try the key I found at the desk. That, that's... Okay. Do you do you try the key? Yes. The door opens. Ta-da. Come here back. Try this door. Oh, okay. Hold on. that was a good sign. What? The old boy. A locked door behind a hidden staircase. The nothing house good. Where they would okay. Nothing good people. lies in this room. So, this room contains a bricked-up window flanked by two dusty wood bed frames, 
sized for children. Closer to the door is a toy chest with windmills painted on its sides and a dollhouse that is a perfect replica of the dreary edifice in which you stand. These furnishings are draped in cobwebs. Lying in the middle of the floor are two small skeletons wearing tattered but oddly familiar clothing. The smaller of the two also cradles a stuffed doll that you may recognize. Uh, uh, the door's actually locked and we can't get through it. Oh, okay. Hold on. You have the little lock icon on it. Yep. Oh, I have the wrong thing clicked. Boop. There you go. I really hope we find the owner's spirit so we can help it move on to whichever of the hells it belongs. Agreed. Crowley looked really perturbed and at the sight of uh, bodies of children. He, uh, he goes to one of the beds and, like, he rips the blanket off of it and goes to cover the, the bodies. Eleanor is gonna and he, say a little prayer. Yeah, he, he starts to chant something to himself, but he, he, like, does it to himself, so. So, you cover them up And as you cover them up, uh, and Rue, you may want to take a step back. I wasn't sure which. <laughs> there's, there's not many more backs. <laughs> oh, that's fine. You just you noticed something happening. <laughs> As you can see, the spirits of the children almost step out of their corpses. And they just kind of stand before you. And that they look specifically at Crowley and give him almost an expression of gratitude. As the one child that's holding the stuffed bear kind of does a half, half of a bow. Was this what you wanted us to come and find? I, yes, but I will bury your bones. There's more the tree. Somewhere. Peaceful. Well, there's, there's, there's some place specific we would like you to bring us, if possible. If it will put your spirits to rest. Yes. I no, at least for my end. I can't speak for my sister. He, the young boy, looks up at his sister. He kind of looks back at you and goes, "I would like to be buried in our crypt." I'm back. Sorry. In your what? Our crypt. We have tombs that are underneath the house. Where is the entrance? Look in the dollhouse. I think Crowley gestures to Eleanor. Because you're in a better yeah, spot without having to step over everything. Yeah, she'll she'll take a look. Okay. So give me a quick perception check. Okay, perfect. So you notice that on top of the house being, um, like, exactly the same, you can see all the secret passageways, like the one you just came up, and you notice that through the room over here,
There uh, seems to be a spiral spiraled staircase. I didn't see your your marker for where you meant. Yeah. Like he said over here. Ah, oh, imagine. hold on. I'm on the I'm on the wrong layer. That's what I get for being on the GM layer. Yeah. Over here. All, the time. all right. Yep. So basically, that little thing you were asking about, Rue, the door is the door is through this room. I will take and they your basically bones to the crypt. Yeah, thank you. That's the only way we could really rest. Do you know who did this to? You? Well, um, it's kind of our parents' fault. They locked us in here and, well, didn't come back. My tummy hurts so bad. My mouth was dry and felt like I was trying to chew on razor blades every time I moved my tongue. No, I. It doesn't mean anything now, but I'm so, still sorry. We are too. Carly gets on his knees and begins to pick up the bones and put them like in the blanket, like makes a knapsack out of the blanket. All right, and then as you make your knapsack out of the blanket, they will basically feed. It's kind of like when they disappeared into the mist. They seem to like, as you're putting them in the bag and and getting ready to move on, they seem to dissipate with that action. Do honor to the dead for their thrivings in life, brought favor to where it is now. And to forget them is to forget also where we are now and why. They shouldn't have had this up. Crowley isn't quite sure how to respond to that. Eleanor is just going to um, double check following the uh, uh, dollhouse to uh, make sure she knows how to get to the secret staircase. Yep, the secret staircase is through the room directly southwest of you. Okay. Okay. Figured out how to get to the secret stairs. This is long. Ooh, ominous. Alright, furniture. Oh. Don't don't you move. Do you guys want to move your tokens? Okay. Yeah, if people are gonna move, now would be the time to do so. Mm -hmm. Alright. 
And give me a second there. Eleanor is just like, all I, right, Fern. Don't, for, don't you do it. Yeah, so I'm moving the token in just so that we can all get in the room, but effectively we're all by the, the, the entrance. Yep. Just so you know, Jordan. Yep, I understand. So this dusty chamber you guys enter is packed with old furniture, chairs, coat racks, standing mirrors, dress mannequins, and the like, all draped in dusty white sheets. Near an iron stove, underneath one of the sheets, you can kind of see what appears to be peeking out a wooden trunk wrapped in a tattered bed sheet. Uh, I'm sorry. It is it is a, a trunk with a piece of a tattered bed sheet like sticking out from underneath the lid. Um... And at first glance, the first thing you notice is that there appears to be stains on the sheet hanging out. And that is over here. We'll move down to open the, uh, open the trunk. So you open up the trunk, and inside you can see what appears to be the remains of a woman. Um, at, like, just as a, like, passive insight, you can tell that she was he is wearing the same uniform that the lady that you fought in the nursery was wearing. Oh, my dear. Oh, no. Did someone grab the other sheet from the bed? If uh, no one else it. moves to do it, then Crowley will go back and grab it. Baylor's gonna go and grab the sheet. And, uh, Inside. I will. I assume she's bones at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will package the bones. Okay. Uh, do you want to give me a quick um, perception check as well? Okay. So you can notice as you're like packing all of her body parts and stuff into the sheet that there are a very large number of like cut marks on the bone. So in order for some like these cut marks to have appeared in the bone like that, she had to have been stabbed very violently, very repeatedly. Crowley, could you remind me when we get out of here to petition the gods that whoever owned this house gets extra punishments in the afterlife? Sounds like a plan to me. Crowley growls in confirmation. <laughs> we leave from here, we burn the house down. Yes, I would agree. Although, we should... part of me believes that this house isn't capable of It exists somewhere different. There is far too much evil atrocities that have been committed within this house for it to stay with one point or another. However, that is just my opinion. I remember I seeing... Try. Oh, I'm all for it. I'm merely stating that do not be surprised 
if it merely disappears when we leave. We should check the other two rooms to make sure there's no one else up here. Agreed. Agreed. But, uh, okay. I will help Eleanor find the key to the secret staircase. And the rest of you can search the room. The remaining room. If there is trouble, holler and we will come to aid you. Okay, uh, I will check to see first if it is unlocked. Surprise, it is unlocked. It is unlocked. Oh, it's just a straight right. doorway? It's not hidden? I thought it was hidden. Uh, it no. is a hidden doorway, but because of where the things are set up in the dollhouse, you kind of know where it is. Yeah, we know where it is. We just got to find the like the handle or button or whatever. Yep. Right. Okay. So we can all safely inspect the other rooms together. Okay. All right. So are you checking the north one first? All right. Yes, the east one first. Okay. Uh, this is just a, a very cobweb-filled, rather nondescript bedroom with a slender bed, a nightstand, a rocking chair, an empty wardrobe, and a small iron stove. I think that was the nanny's or <laughs> Looks like it. And then, uh, there's a door right here, correct? Yep. There's so many bedrooms here. Uh, this is also another very dusty, um... Just another spare bedroom. Uh, contains a slender bed, nightstand, small iron stove, writing desk with a stool, an empty wardrobe, and a rocking chair. In the rocking chair, however, seems to be a doll in a lacy yellow dress. Nope. Smiling at you. Nope. Cobwebs draping its face like a wedding veil. No, ma'am. Hey guys, just so you're aware, there's uh, in about a minute and a half there's going to be more ads incoming. There's nothing I can do. I've already snoozed it a whole bunch of times. Just a heads up that you're going to get hit with a couple more uh, ads. He will move closer to it to see what reacts. I guess I could run a one minute ad break now to stop <laughs> that, but not. I think it's just better, better to get out of the way. You said there's a writing desk? Any drawers and whatnot? Uh, it is a writing desk. There is, like, drawers. If you open it up, you just find a quill and some ink. Is it like a raven? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alcarid, give me a perception check. You're bad at these, but this is gonna be great. <laughs> oh no. He has been left all alone in the spooky room. Fourteen. Uh -oh. Now, Banthor tells Bramble that there's a okay. doll that looks very, uh, weird. You, you freak out for a second as you feel something skittering across your feet. You look down and notice a rat. Kind of just scurry across the floor and then seemingly disappear into a, a crack in the wall. Damn. I'm gonna take the doll. No. I'm going to leave the room now. <laughs> You're taking the creepy doll. Okay. You add one creepy doll to your inventory. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> creepy smiling doll. There you go. <laughs> All right, and seeing as the venture down into the basement and into the um, sub-level is the next area, and you guys need to level up, um, we're going to call it there. Oh. Level three already. You are level three, yes. Wow. Wow. We'll take that. We'll take that. Sometimes you get class choices now. Fighting stuff, fighting stuff. All right. But we're, we're otherwise wrapping it up here? Yeah, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, because I feel like the next, the next part is best to handle as a thing to itself. Sure. So, it's also, um, we're like 30 minutes out from the hardest of hard uh, cutoffs for you. So that makes sense. Right, right exactly. I figured now was just a good time to call it. Yeah. yeah no, um, sure. Thank you for running. Yeah. No, no problem. Much. Thank you. Yeah. I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody watching the stream enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back here not next week, but the week after. Right. Um, oh. I hope everybody enjoys their holidays. So the thirtieth of November. Correct. I. Yeah. I mean, I. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm fine with running on Thanksgiving, but I imagine that everybody's got things going on. So. I th yeah, I got dinner that day with my parents. Yep, same, same. Yep. So, so we'll postpone for Thanksgiving, but the thirtieth will be our next stream and the next session. Okay, sounds good. Bye, everyone. All right, cool. All right, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go say goodbye to my chat and wrap up my stream, and then I will meet you guys in the other uh, chat to do level up stuff. If yeah. Everybody's still Woo. there. Yep, I'm good. Right, yep, bye guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yep. the stream. I'm gonna real quick handle mine. So everybody, thank you for watching. Hope you all had a great night. I look forward to seeing you all on the thirtieth. Um, I'll have to come up with a title for the news, the next one. Oh, well, you know what? We'll handle that. You got time. Yeah. Uh, yep. But uh, anyway, bye bye. Bye. Later. <laughs> Oh boy, guys. Let me close this out and I'll put up my music real quick. Da, 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 da. Where is my. Is it this tab? Which tab is it? Which tab could it be? Which tab could it be? It's this one. Yeah. All right, guys. So tonight was pretty great. Uh, a little slow. We're still getting into our characters, I think, but like ultimately we're on a roll here. We're getting through the House of Death. We got something really cool coming for next time. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't done the House of Death house before, so it's all new experience to me. We met some. We we found out. Yep, they're ghost kids. We are gonna give them a proper burial as they are deserving. Uh, they should not have suffered, but. Uh, as we keep going, the, the dust will shake off. We'll get a little bit more comfortable with our roleplay. Which is weird, because half of us are LARPers, but, like, we're, we're, we're all more than half of us are LARPers. But, like, we're on our roll. Uh, I'm going to level up off screen. Uh, we're going to take Eldritch Knight. Spoilers. So, uh, fun there. I was, it's either Eldritch Knight or Echo Knight. Because I, I, um, I like Echo Knight for the, the board control, get, basically getting two characters to fuss around with. But uh, I'm thinking Eldritch Knight because I really want to go, like, electricity magic. Uh, like like Frankenstein's monster and Thaddeus from uh, World of Warcraft. Or as uh, at least I know it from Hearthstone. Like, this undead lightning. Uh, I think what was Frankenstein from Fate was like that. Uh, from the Fate series. So that's what we got going on. Uh, we'll be live... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing more streaming, so, like, keep your eye out for me. Anytime that I go live, it's going to be anywhere between 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. during the week, maybe the weekend. I don't have a schedule yet, but you'll you'll see me live for more stuff uh, very soon. Thank you all so much for watching. We had some great viewership. We had some great interactions tonight. Standby, thank you for, be, uh, for being a new follower. 
Uh, thank you, Bertha Walls, for being here. Thank you, Link is Lovely. Thank you, just everybody who's been here. Oh, and uh, thank you, Constable Gamer, for the raid from earlier. I really do appreciate all the all the help, support. I appreciate everybody coming hang hang out. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Have a magical time.